I'm trying to think like uh, what are what uh, we're going to be talking about. I don't. I get. Oh, uh, I started recording. I I, I did. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> this another no way home video response. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know what to fucking respond to today, but I don't know this. I guess there are a lot of these, but I don't know. This one seemed. But it, it would it seemed short enough <laughs> to be like churned out easy, and uh, it seemed like it had a condescending tone to it. I don't know. It seemed interesting, but <sighs> I can already feel the hatred coming off every Marvel fanboy who clicked on this video. First things first, I'm going to say this loud and clear. Uh, we're not Marvel fanboys. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will be talking about spoilers. So if you're willing to hear did, me rant about why I think why this movie review, is a you have cheap, to have this shit? I... insulting, manufactured cash grab, I recommend you go in either already knowing about the spoilers or having already seen the film. That is your final warning, and my rant will now commence. Now that everyone who didn't Get want to know to about it. spoilers Get is gone, I feel free to point Get out how to mentally it. dense they are. Come on! Was there seriously anyone in existence that did not believe Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire would be in this movie? There was I a don't fucking care. Wait, are you there, Rage? Yeah, yeah I'm here. All right. This all right. is, I think this is a video was. I think made uh, right after it was released. Well, there was, you know, you, there was that marketing with, uh, where they were still trying to hide, yeah, hide everything. They, so. well, yeah, Andrew and Toby were in the marketing before release, but like, okay, like, it's not even like a lie, like some marketing is, like it's just like hiding things that so you're hyped when you finally see it because you have no idea what is going to be in the movie. Like that, it, that's it. Like, why are you criticizing the movie for this, really? Like, uh, th again, I don't fucking care. I don't know. Okay. The reason Marvel strategically left them out of the trailers, I know. There's no way in hell this. I feel free to point out how mentally dense they are. Come on. Was wait, there. Wait, who's mentally dense? Wait a minute. Hold on. And my rant will now commence. Now that everyone who didn't want to know about spoilers is gone, I feel free to point out how mentally dense they are. Come! The people who didn't care about spoilers are mentally dense. Okay, okay. but we have already, already seen the movie. N never mind. On! Was there seriously anyone in Come existence that did on. not believe Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire would be in this movie? There was a reason Marvel strategically <laughs> left them out of the trailers. I know. There's no way- There's a re- There's a reason I'm 30 goddamn one. Gray hair. Gray beard. No one's gonna get that. That's only like a fanboy- Never mind. Uh, uh wait. They str- They- Fuck it. <laughs> trailers i know there's no way in hell this movie could have broken so many boxes well they strategically left them out of the trailers i mean yeah but it's not even like a bad corporate decision like it's kind of wholesome in a way because like we have no idea what to expect so like when we do see them it like it's like it's genuine it's a lot more surprising than because that's kind of a problem with trailers nowadays isn't it is that they can like reveal yeah. they can reveal shit too much like for example Spider-Man being in Civil War is not, like, really a surprise when Civil War came out, because it was in the trailer. Uh, what the fuck? There are so many... Uh, so many trailers that just uh, show the, the entire plot, and you dude, basically know what, what's going to happen. Dude, that's actually what the Batman v Superman trailer did. At the end of the Batman v Superman trailer, they showed Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman fighting Doomsday. And, yeah. like, they already show, like, Lex Luthor manipulating Batman and Super. Like, we already know the entire plot from the trailer. I, Bruh. Also, one of the things, one of the movies that is very notorious for this is uh, Transformers uh, Last Night. It, yeah. That the, that the movie had so many goddamn trailers that showed so much. To like, be you had this trailer yeah. that showed all, all of these, like, bad guys. This, like, cool, you know scene and then you had trailer where, where they showed one of them getting killed off yeah yeah like why would you why would you do that <laughs> it's, it's like if the star wars trailer had like obi-wan's death in it 
Like uh, you, you could probably cut uh, m most of the movie from that those trailers. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, and you know, like this movie, the tra the trailers, the marketing to this movie didn't have that problem. But unlike, see what they've had to do, like Marvel, they like edited trailers to be like be different than the movies, so you won't expect what happened. Because again, everyone knows in Infinity War they had like Hulk and shit on Wakanda, but we obviously that didn't happen, and it was it you're was also, it, wait wait sorry you also no no uh, go ahead go ahead I'll be quick I'll be quick it was clever because when we coming into the movie we didn't know what would happen to Hulk and that he would get like get beaten like Hulk getting beaten at the beginning of the film was surprising because we saw Hulk in the trailer in Wakanda well if we saw um. Uh, Hulk Buster Iron Man like Bruce Banner Bruce Banner then we could someone we probably would have could have predicted like oh he gets beaten before so it's it's well done in Infinity War's part but the thing is this movie it doesn't even have to lie to us like that to keep it's uh, surprises a surprise but you're just focusing on we knew they would be in the movie anyway I, okay what, I, the fact that in a tw under 12 minute video, this is one of your points on this cheap and insulting movie. I feel like says a bit, but what were you saying, I mean, Rage? Yeah, I mean, one of the a good example for this is the movie Sinks, you know, the animated movie from Illumination. Oh, yeah, about yeah, those, yeah. About the sinning animal, where they basically show everything that happened in the movie, even the big, like, big reveal in the third act about the performances yeah but it just spoil everything so oh that reminds me to be fair about like transformers and illumination movies does anyone actually care about the plot though <laughs> i mean illumination the, the whole point behind that studio is that they're they make uh, those animated movies super cheap yeah they, they're off-brand the, pixar they're lazy the, pixar sorry go ahead the president said that the uh, himself said that they are trying to make movies as cheaply as possible so that the return you know all the money that oh they will, right make, right you know right they, they make more money they get the most from the returns that that's why they rely so heavily on minions because it's it's really easy for them to just bank on them yeah i believe as well as something yeah as well as something like secret life of pets and now seeing well. yeah well for one, and, and this, oh, sorry. and remember, these are the guys that are making the Mario movie. Oh fuck! I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So it's going to be either really safe or really insulting. God. Well, it's not kind. Of, well, it's funny you would say that because the title. But anyway, uh, I forgot. I I forgot what I was even thinking about when you said that shit. Um. Uh. Uh, my brain, no. Wait, no, get it back. Hold on. It's almost here. The, the, the thought's almost back. What were we yeah, talking sorry. about before Illumination? Oh! Uh, about trailers and all of that. I remember that. So about Illumination, one, I had a thought that wasn't the solo movie, like, the opposite of what Illumination does. is like, they spent way too much money on that movie, and then, like, <laughs> barely any, well, a, a lot less people saw it than you would expect for a Star Wars movie, so... It made shit returns, but... Uh, I mean, it lost money so low, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you have so many other movies, uh, you, mainly recently, that were, are bombing on the, you know, box yeah. office. And they're not making returns. Yeah, do you think, like, you know, Illumination... You, because they would be, like, greedy enough to do it. Do you think they'll ever capitalize on, like, the Facebook moms... Like, they'll make the Christian Minions movie, dude. Where, like, it's uh... Minion Jesus, dude. And, like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think Cause the funny thing about the Minions movie was that they purposely made, the, made them hide in a cave after Napoleon because they knew that if they would be, like, in the world, they would probably follow Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, you know, <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's the kind of the whole point that the you know after Napoleon they went into hiding until yeah. like you know, 
the 80s or 90s, so... It was like when the moon landing was or whatever, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think 80s, because it, like, it was Gru was a fucking kid in it, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, when I was a, a dumb kid, I, that ending, like, I remember the ending, it was like child Gru steals the fucking whatever it was from the bat the act the bad guys in the movie and I thought like oh my god that is the coolest that's the most clever payoff in the history of cinema I I was mind blown by it but anyway I mean I, I still really like the first one the this me yeah the first one yeah. and the second and the second and third one have like good moments but yeah most of them are not really good like illumination movies yeah, I watched the first movie a lot as a kid. That's pretty nostalgic. Me too. Me too. I, I watched the movie all the time, which is sad because uh, in that same year, like Mega Mind, yeah, you know, I come out and too. and you know, when I was a kid, I didn't really like it, but now I wow. absolutely adore, adore that movie. Yeah, can we get and, in a Discord debate with your kid self? I mean, I <laughs> I didn't really get it. You know, yeah, I think that yeah. movie was that movie was really ahead of its time. Yeah. If if that movie came out like uh, during like you know the Avengers craze, yeah, th- then Mega Mind would be be absolutely everywhere. And now it's getting much more popular because of you know superheroes are extremely popular right now. Yeah. I, as a parody, it, I think it just came out at the wrong time basically. It came out in like. 2011 right like one year before the avengers i think yeah yeah that's kind of the sad part is if if uh it would came out a few years few years later it would probably make much more money because yeah. the speaker of me absolutely blasted that movie you know it made much more money than it yeah and and it's sad that uh, mega mind was the last dreamworks parody movie because you know dreamworks yeah. started making movies as a parody of Disney and that because right, they, right, did, right. Uh, they, they did Shrek, they did uh, Monsters vs. Aliens. They, right, right, oh, I know what you mean. And Megamind was their last parody movie and after that they, in this like a uh, really stupid statement, they said that no one likes parody movies anymore, which is untrue. <laughs> oh yeah, they compared because... Shark Tale to Megamind. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was stupid. Low brain. But, like I, I can understand why I, me as a kid I wouldn't really like it as much but now now I really love many of the jokes that I didn't understand didn't understand back then so yeah 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 me too um wait what were you we supposed to be talking about <laughs> we talked about trailers about how some of them like spoil a lot of the movie how some of them don't and that's kind of why we started talking about the illumination right. and all of that. Right. So basically, Audrey Graywin shut the fuck up about the trailer. Box office records if it had been announced beforehand that they were in the film. And even if it had a trailer. Oh, she's still fucking talking about it? No. Oh my God. You know, it's funny. I was thinking to myself, man, we go on tangents too goddamn much. And then I hear. Okay. I know. There's no way in hell this movie could have broken so many box office records if it had been announced beforehand that they were in the film. And even if- Uh, how did that- how do you know? Did you ask, like, a, an economist or something? Like, I, you can't predict that. I, why would it not? Like, I get- I mean, m- most people w- were hoping for it. Even uh, if a lot of people, like, you know, there were people that were still saying, like, no, they're, they're you know, they will not be there, but you know you have all these villains. Plus, there was that trailer in where was it where they show like the lizard being punched by nothing or kicked by nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. That feels nostalgic now, weirdly, but so I think uh, the whole mystery behind the movie, what what it will be about, you know, I think that's a. I personally think that's a pretty good marketing strategy. That's a good point, but. Can I put it like this, though? Because I was thinking about it, and like in the hypothetical universe where they did have Andrew and Toby on the marketing. 
So I guess people are supposed to be like, man, I would see this movie for Andrew and Toby, but now that I saw them in the trailer, I'm out. I'm done. I saw enough. I, I only needed the few I think, seconds. I think the issue is that uh, if they would show them, we, because what would they show? Like the them like appearing, uh, or them being, yeah, or them being, uh, or them swinging together. Because yeah. then it would kind of uh, ruin, like the reveal. Because well, we didn't yeah. know when they are going to show up, how they are going to show up. All, only the only information that we are that we knew was they are going to be there, but we didn't know how. How oh, you know? Oh yeah. Well, they I, are going to get get there. I agree that would ruin the reveal. That's what we were talking about before. But he, she's talking about like marketing wise, like pe people wouldn't see this movie as much if they knew what they the characters they wanted to see were in it. Like okay. <laughs> They were prob they were literally like people on Reddit and shit on the like Ramy Reddit or whatever that said like okay, just let me know is is Toby in this movie? That's all I gotta know before I see it. <laughs> and when they and when they did when it was confirmed, they're like okay, yep, yeah, I'll see the movie. Like it, it's not no. I mean, you could see like uh, I think uh, using the villains instead of the Spider Man, like the older Spider Man, was a better strategy because it kind of allowed them you know to for the fans to you know yeah yeah uh, expect them to show up because uh, you know the first trailer we had dog Ock and goblin and maybe a hint of electro and then in the next trailers we also got all of them plus uh, sandman and the lizard so. yeah it's honestly brilliant brilliantly done because it's still like especially the line you're not peter parker like built hyping people for Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield, but it was, they know. still made it like it'd be a really good uh, surprise still. So it's really well done. But I know one thing that uh, that works really really well. When the first uh, trailer trailer came out, when you you know you saw Doc Ock and the Goblin, yeah, that yeah. I, you 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 didn't you didn't see the Goblin or Electro. You just uh, heard them. So yeah, a lot of people started worrying as well, well as being excited for what they're going to do with Doc Ock. Is it going to be a good guy or a bad guy? And then when the second trailer came out, where they shown that, you know, they they're just talking to him and they're you know in the same room, you know, pretty okay with each other. Then a lot of people, especially in the EFAB audience, had a breath of sigh of re release because you know he's he's probably going to be a good guy by the end of the movie because he should yeah. be a, a good guy because you know he oh, was yeah, mind controlled sense, but... so so yeah. i think showing doc doc ock the one that's you know the nicest of the villains as the first one that revealed is a, it is honestly a pretty good uh yeah, uh, I mean that Hello Peter moment sure. is like iconic now because of the trailer. Uh, you know, I just realized she's criticizing the movie for having like good marketing. Like, did she not know it was a movie made to make money before? Like, uh, like, all I don't get like, it's fucking stupid. I don't know. Like, yeah, they weren't in the trailers, and okay. If it had, a majority of those people would have only gone to see this movie for the sole reason that I'm making this video. What the fuck? In so many box office records, if it had been announced beforehand that they were in the film. And you oh, it wouldn't have. Why though? Can you, you have to justify that? You can't just declare that to be true. Uh, like, how do you? Why are you so sure about what would have happened in an alternate universe, like economic wise, or? It want to have broke records because, like, why would so many people not watch the movie? If again, they care, they want to watch the movie for Andrew and Toby is what she's saying. But if they know they're in the movie, they don't want to watch it anymore. It doesn't make sense. Even if it had, a majority of those people would have only gone to see this movie for the sole reason that I'm making this video: novelty and nostalgia. This is the most. Okay. Well. Again, I don't fucking care what the reason for people watching the movie is. Like, I, I mean, I kind, I mean, I uh, that was already the case. 
I knew a lot of the Raimi cucks were just gonna watch it just for that shit, and, and not pay attention. That's actually, like, I was telling Fanboy about this, uh, like, before I watched the movie, is that we have to make sure that, like, the movie holds up on its own without the fan service, is I believe what I told him. And, uh, it does. Tom Holland's Spider-Man, as a character, does especially, uh, most fan servicey movie in existence. Wait, the most fan servicey movie in existence? What about the Force Awakens though? Or, or even, yeah, or, even or even the Rise of Skywalker even. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, oh, wait, which one is more fan servicey out of those two? Well, the Force because the because the Force Awakens recreates Episode Four while while. <laughs> Episode uh, nine uses a literal memes, f fan base memes in its plot. Yeah, I mean, well, the Force Awakens was actually like success, like it was good at being just fan service, if that makes sense. Like it actually worked with mm. people. No, 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 no. It wasn't well, it wasn't well written, but it it worked with people. Is what I mean. People li it it liked pe it got the reaction it wanted. Is what I mean. The rise yeah, of the situation the opposite, but. <laughs> Because people were sick at that, at that moment, you know, from Star Wars. Oh yeah, well they didn't I... want to. They hated it. Where it's uh, Force Awakens, you know, a lot of things happened. Like uh, the Force Awakens was two thousand fourteen. Fourteen, fourteen. I think or so. Or fifty. I think. It's I think 14. fifteen. No, it was two thousand fifteen because two thousand sixteen was Rogue One and two thousand seventeen was Last Jedi. Oh, you're it right. It was two thousand. Right. It was two thousand fifteen. You're right. So it was ten years after Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. And uh, three years after Disney acquired Lucasfilm, so you know there was a lot of excitement. You had that first trailer where you saw, you know. Han and Chewie, and everything was really vague with that movie. Yeah. You you saw, like, some similar things, but, you know, you didn't know what, what was going on. Yeah, Anomaly... Or, or what it was about. Anomaly made a pretty accurate comparison to, like, the marketing of The Force Awakens was similar to No Way Home, but... Um... I, think we, I think we disagreed with that, no? Well, The Force Awakens I, I... as a movie is not the same as No Way Home, but... The marketing, yeah, but we did. Sure. We disagreed with the ma marketing because uh, with No Way Home we knew what the plot was about. With the first weekend we didn't oh. know what it was about. That You're was right. like the argument that we talked about when we were discussing the anomaly video. That like the first weekend doesn't tell you anything about the plot. You yeah. had so many videos just dissecting every frame of that of those trailers, trying to find. All, you, you had all of these th theories about what is going to happen, you know? Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. While, while with No Way Home you knew what it was about, about, what was the main conflict, how, you know, what is going to happen to get all of these villains in. So, the marketing was, uh, you know, different. Yeah, you're right. You're in right. a lot of ways. You're right. Anyway, um... Please shut the fuck up about the marketing. I don't care. Or now, fan service does. What you talking about? People only watch it for the fan service. Movie in existence. Now, fan service doesn't have to be inherently bad, but when it is the crux of your entire story, you lose my support. And let me make this. Okay. Um. It's not though. It's not. What do you mean by crux? You have to define what you that means, and I guess you're going to, but. Uh, let me just go back real quick. You know, calling this the most fan story movie in existence, like, I don't know. Again, Force Awakens, that's it. Trailers, I know. There's no way in hell. Wait a minute, wouldn't Endgame count? I mean, yeah, you had so many different movies referenced there. Actually, yeah. And what about Endgame? <laughs> what? I mean, let's uh, look at this. We have a re you know, references to. The three original Spider-Man movies, the two amazing ones, as well as the two previous Spider-Man ones. Tom, yeah, the Watson. As well, as well as the few event, you know, other Marvel movies, as well as TV shows like you had Dare yeah. Daredevil plus uh, plus 
what else? What else? Uh, uh what Doctor Strange, like Doctor Strange, yeah, yeah. As well as I guess Endgame was referenced because of the blip. So you had, I guess, ten movie slash TV shows that were referenced there. Yeah, with Endgame, it referenced like all of the MCU, which was a lot more um po like popular in the mainstream culture than any Spider-Man films were until maybe No Way Home. But uh, I mean the. Sp the Raimi trilogy, especially the, well, the entire Raimi trilogy is extremely popular, popular with but, the, the yeah. mainstream. You have so many different memes from those movies. No, no, I I know, I know, I, I did, but the MCU is obviously different, right? Yeah, but the, you look at the excitement for Endgame, and then you look at it uh, for you know No Way Home, and you can see like, I think there was a much more much more passion for for you know no way home like uh, pe like people were making animations for for this movie where with endgame there was a lot of speculation because they were also making you know they didn't want to spoil anything so a lot of the endgame trailers w were yeah were very wet vague so yeah it it is uh, different like uh, I know that the end game has more fan service, but I think that the fan service here is more passionate. I think. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. Because uh, they could have made, they could have uh, made a lot more things in end game. Like, there are still like characters that did that did not really do that much in both Infinity War and End Game. So. Oh. Like the biggest e example is like Drax. Is you know, his whole yeah. character was about. He wanted to kill Thanos because he killed his family. Right. And yet he does almost nothing in those two movies. Yeah. So. I forgot what point I was even... Oh, I guess we're talking about... About fans, oh, fan service, fan service. If No Way Home is the most fan service movie in all of existence, I mean, I guess it's up. I guess it's up there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. That it's... It is... Uh, it has a lot of uh, fan service. Let, let, let's just get to the substance of it. This movie could have broken so many box office records if it had been announced beforehand that they were in the film. And even if it had, a majority of those people would have only gone to see this movie for the sole reason that I'm making this video. Novelty and nostalgia. This is the most fan y movie in existence. Now, fan service doesn't have to be inherently bad, but when it is the crux of your entire story, you lose my support. And let me make this abundantly clear. I don't care if you're someone who thinks that this movie is great. You are allowed to think that. A lot Why of- Why do they keep saying this shit? Like, I don't- Okay. Thank you. I- Alright. Uh -huh. I- I get it. I know- I know I'm allowed to think otherwise. I guess she just- I guess it's saying your opinion isn't wrong. I- I guess. I don't know, or something, I don't know. It is, it is a big, the wording is pretty vague, honestly, so. It would probably make more sense, instead of saying this shit over and over again, they, they, they just said, like, maybe I'm wrong about the movie, maybe you have, like, reasons for liking the movie I didn't realize, or something like that, but, I don't know, I people left this movie thinking it was a fun movie going experience and I, I, I thought a little bit more than that but all right I can't fault them for that my purpose in making this video is I not know. to insinuate that you're somehow wrong in liking the movie oh okay okay all right I, I, I guess I was a bit preemptive I was a bit preemptive she actually said it well all of the anger I'm about to express is directly aimed at the studio that made it Okay. Even if you enjoy- Well, it was also made- like, it wasn't just made by a studio, it was made by people. Like, Ray- like, Raimi and Mark Webb, like, they get their name said, but John Watts, no, he's just a corporate puppet or something, I guess. If you enjoyed the movie, you deserve to be made aware how low the people who made it think of you. If for- Okay. For some reason you are blissfully unaware of the plot for No Way Home, it centers around Peter Parker convincing Doctor Strange to cast a spell that will make people forget Spider-Man's identity. Shit gets fucked up in the process and Actually, every you know, real quick about what they think of us. 
I mean, I never really claimed that the corporate executives at Marvel, like, loved me or something. Like, I know it's just, like, I know at the end of the day, all superhero movies, I mean, I guess all blockbuster movies are, are just made to make money, and that's, like, their main purpose. I mean, yeah. But they can still have, they, there are still creatives behind them that want to tell good stories. So, like, I, I mean, know. I'm not, uh, like, Red Light was a media that I'll just hate on a movie just because it sells, like, toys or something. Yeah. Like, I don't have any issue with that. Like, people need to make, make money, and a lot of, because uh, you have a lot of these fans, and they, um, how should I say this? You basically have a product that a lot of people like, and they want to support it, and they want to, see, as well as they want maybe a souvenir. Yeah. Or something from it, so that's why you have figurines, toys, as well as other things like that that, that are associated with a specific movie. Yeah. A, a good uh, example where, where you kind of see that the, probably Disney really fucked up was uh, Mando Season 1. Right. Because uh, Baby Yoda exploded, and they had oh. almost nothing, nothing, like no, uh, no merchandise, merchandise of, of him, so... Yeah, it was... That one was uh, pretty weird because maybe it does show that they were scared that maybe they really fucked up with Star Wars and that, you know, they're, they basically didn't see that it was going to be so popular, the Mando, Mandalorian, so. Yeah. Um... But, like, uh, I, I can see it, like, in some of the Spider-Man movies, like Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 2, and maybe kind of with this one. Or you can see like an executive's hand in it or the comp corporation's hand especially with the spider-man 3 and amazing spider-man 2 i mean you can really see it i mean maybe but this film is a lot more focused than a spider-man 3 or tasm 2 is yeah yeah but if we would be looking like this uh, logically because the, if you there were there were those articles that showed that like a lot of the things were were being uh, the script had to be changed especially the third act because they didn't know if they could get all the actors and all of that so yeah maybe there were maybe there were plans for some of the other spider-man villains like uh maybe even venom the original venom or or maybe well uh, oh, oh some of the other ones Dame you know Dahan, green goblin or or even the rhino or something like that maybe <laughs> it is a it is a funny thing to think about but we, we don't know but it does kind of feel like that there there probably were a lot of issues during during uh, you know filming as well as the writing phase because they couldn't be certain about, about if they could get everyone but thankfully they stuck the land landing unlike with Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. Yeah. Raimi wasn't capable of it, but John Watts was. Isn't that interesting? Anyway. I mean, I mean, uh, I think Amazing Spider-Man 2 is probably the worst out of these when it comes to, like, what the, what the studio demanded oh, yeah. for it, because yeah. you had, like, uh, three villains, plus you had all of these uh, things for, for like, a Spider-Man cin cin cinematic C universe. Yeah. All of these uh, references, all that of these bullshit. things that would, yeah, because yeah. they were plan planning to do even more of it. So, I would say that the uh, that movie is probably the le least honest yeah. out of all the Spider-Man movies. Yeah. The Tasm Two honestly does make Spider-Man Three look better in comparison, because at least in Spider-Man Three, oh, absolutely. Wait, well, at least because at least in Spider-Man Three. <laughs> Like all the all the plots, all the villains were there to, for the purpose of telling a story in that movie. They weren't setting up anything at all. It was just to tell a story about. Revenge. And even then, it, it, you know, and it still has like that uh, pretty somber ending, you know, yeah. where Peter forget forgives Sandman as well as yeah. Harry dies uh, with him. Well, Harry dies so. I think, like, there was a point behind Spider-Man 3, like, but yeah. with Amazing Spider-Man 2, they just wanted to, like, jumpstart a, a universe. Yeah, you know what? 
Oh, we're completely off subject. You're right. We're completely off subject now, but what's the theme of The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Um, well, a, a lot of stuff happens in that movie. A lot of stuff that doesn't really connect to anything else. Yeah. Like, like Peter's parents, you know, who you have that train station down there where where you, you have that... I, I'm, I, some... I kind of have an answer. I think I know what the movie thought their theme was, I believe, where they thought it was about, like, the, the inevitability of time. Like, you can't stop time or something. Like, because the, like, the May opening... Maybe, maybe. Because the opening Probably. scene has, like, starts of a clock or some shit. And, you know, Gwen is killed by a clock tower because Peter isn't physically capable of stopping the clock moving and like that means like they he, he couldn't stop time basically <laughs> is the idea but the problem with that is that ha theme has like nothing to do with the other plots in the movie at all like, I guess it kind of uh, maybe it connects to Harry because he he has the disease and oh, he's right. trying to you know Save himself. Yeah. Maybe. He, yeah, he was basically trying to do the same thing as Spider Man trying to stop the clock. <clears throat> I guess. I, I guess. But, like, what does Electro have to do with time? He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't. Because, ele I don't know, electricity powers up clocks. I don't know. <laughs> what did. What did. Like, maybe Peter's parents have something to do with the time theme? It was. They were going to die inevitably. Even though their deaths were extremely stupid at the start of the movie. Yeah, what did the Aunt May plot of her stopping the fucking airplane or some whatever it was? What did that? Wait, that would be stopping time then. She did. Aunt, so Aunt May can stop time. Wait, Spider-Man Man, I guess. Aunt, Aunt May wasn't in the plane. It was Peter's parents. No, 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 at the end of the movie, she like stopped a plane from crashing or something. That's... Oh yeah, that there was that. Stupid! They, those planes were going to crash into each other. Now I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I forgot it forgot, too. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. I, yeah, me too. <laughs> I honestly only remember it because the fucking Ralph the Movie Maker review mentions it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't even remember how she stopped the planes from crashing, but. So Aunt May can stop I, time, I guess. Uh, what were you saying? I think like the power is, you know, there are there is some kind of a blackout. So yeah, I, I don't remember. Basically, they need to turn the power, power on so that the planes could see, could see each other. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember it. Yeah. What What are the other plots in the movie? Uh, Rhino. What you does have, Rhino have to do with time? He. He was at the start, and then he was at the end. Because, and you could see his suit in the, in the, scene where they have all the like villains that they yeah. were going to use in the future. I got it. I got it. Rhino is the symbolic symbol of time itself, dude. He, he just like you were, just like you didn't exist before you were born, and just like you don't exist after you die. It's like Rhino. Rhino was there at the beginning, and Rhino is there at the end, dude. And Peter, Peter, at the end of the movie, facing Rhino head on. That's him accepting that death is unstoppable. Boom. Or he's just a, an angry Russian guy in a in a Rhino suit. So, Tasm Two is the greatest film ever made, dude. The, the fact that there was a an if an if up the beta on that movie is still. Really weird for uh, to me. I remember that shit. They like actually just kind of gave up like halfway through. I think, but I think I think in the first uh, first like fourth of the debate they gave up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the funny thing is, South Paul. I think he was on the Tasm Two side. Like he was at like they were asked what they thought of the movie, and South Paul was like. Um, I think it's better than people say. 
Like, he didn't say it was good. <laughs> he just said it was better than people say. I mean, he likes the <laughs> Eternals, so probably oh. he, he enjoys, uh, like, some of the bad movies. I mean, he probably acknowledges that it's a bad movie, but he probably really enjoys it. Yeah. The same with Eternals. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I guess more of this shit. Everyone who knows Peter Parker's identity from other universes, aka the other live-action Spider-Man franchises, gets transported into the Avengers universe. And the rest of the movie is Peter, MJ, and Ned facing the consequences of this, as all the villains from the other properties reprise their roles and Peter tries to cure them of everything that makes them villainous so they don't have to be sent back to their universes only to be killed. <sighs> Jesus. My whole opinion- You don't have to say things in one sentence. That's like- probably the first thing you would learn when write when script writing but i think it was just uh like a, a joke i don't know maybe or just a statement of this is dumb what, she i shied and shed yeah. jesus probably yeah <laughs> opinion of this movie can be summarized in this next sentence i'm about to speak <clears throat> Everything this movie was attempting to achieve, Spider-Verse did infinitely better. Those who That's actually not what I was expecting her to say. I, I, I was expecting her to say, everything this movie did, it failed. And I was like rubbing my hands together like, oh yeah, here we go. But now, oh, wait, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I think it's uh, true, like, uh, Spider-Verse is probably a better movie. Yeah, oh. yeah. It is, it is better written. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree at all. And um, just because, like, two, two movies do the same premise doesn't mean that that the only one of them has to be a good one and the other one oh, is oh, a, the ultimate, automatically the bad one. Yeah, this reminds me of, um, what was it? Was it Max Fail? Yeah, I think he would do that. Oh, wait. In, like, his video, Bioshock is not a masterpiece. One of his trends would just com compare Bioshock to other games that did similar things and say, Look, this game did it better. Bioshock's not a masterpiece. Owned. Um, yeah, what you said. It doesn't matter if Spider-Verse did it better. Uh, it doesn't matter at all, but... I am curious on the arguments, though, because, like, Spider-Verse, like, and No Way Home have, like, pretty different plots, I think, right? Like, I don't know. They don't really feel uh, similar some... at all but, to me. But... I mean, there is uh, that similarity where the other Spider-Men are transported into that world because, like, the the machine, it, the... Uh... Was it that, the uh... The spider DNA got into that machine that, yeah. and then it basically transported those individuals with the spider gene into that universe, right? Yeah, you know where where in here the the spell finds the uh, transports people that know about Peter's identity. So it's it is kind of a similar sim, it is similar but a bit different, and. In uh, Spider-Verse, they just want to go home where here they want to cure the villains. Yeah, that... I just realized it actually makes, like, more sense in No Way Home because, like, the re why why did only a few Spider-Man get sent to the universe? No Way Home explains it, that the Doctor Strange's spell, the box, is holding them off from coming into the universe. Um, how did, the, like, how did Kingpin build a, a machine that was able to... Do you have travel the multiverse? Like what? I'm, what do I you mean, he's that uh, does that. He is really rich. Plus, he has a uh, Doctor Octa. Uh, it's you know the female Doctor Octopus right, 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 right. working on it. Plus, he wants to see his family again. So I understand why and how he builds it. Oh. He has both the reason. He has both the reason sources and employees who will who would be able to build something like oh, that. You're right. But I'm just, I like, I, you're right, but I'm just saying it makes a little bit more sense in No Way Home because of a magical spell. Like, I mean, yeah, but then, like, there was that whole discussion about, you know, uh, whether, whether uh, Electro knows Spider-Man's identity 
you yeah, know. It, I, I mean, it's a problem with the movie. But plus, was, oh, plus, wasn't in the Spider Verse like that? That uh, they only opened it up, and they were expecting only one different Spider Man, so they probably just closed it. Oh, That's you're probably right. why why there why there were only like five five of the five of them, right? Yeah. You have the other other people, Peter, other Peter, Gwen, the Penny, Spider Ham, and Noir. Noir. Yeah. yeah, five of them. So I think uh, Spider Spider Wars is honestly better. You do, like it is explained in the movie why and how things happen, but I don't think No Way Home is uh, that much worse than Spider Wars in this aspect, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I was just, I don't know. I guess I was being devil's advocate, but anyway, you're right. He was attempting to achieve. Spider-Verse did infinitely better. Those who follow my channel know that I'm a simp for the How to Train Your Dragon franchise, and they will forever be my favorite animated films in existence. But if I had to choose any movie that I think deserves a runner-up for that title, it would probably be Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's an animated film that- uh, I was gonna say, there was no point for mentioning the How to Train Your Dragon thing, but whatever. I, I mean, her- well, she has other videos on her on her channel about like how to train your dragon so yeah plus she has that uh, like, you can see like she has that uh, hour and uh, and 20 minute critique on like uh oh, yeah. how to train your dragon show so oh yeah yeah i'm just being mean at this point <laughs> i mean it tackles the same uh, yeah 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 <laughs> multiverse theory that seems ever present in the Spider-Man comics. And it's also a film that included a bunch of references to the already existing Spider-Man movies. Everything that No Way Home was trying to achieve. But the reason Into the Spider-Verse works so much better is because the story of that film is still organic. Even though it brings in characters that Spider-Man fans are already familiar with, the film allows these characters to function seamlessly in conjunction with Miles Morales' story. But Audrey, Spider-Verse also used blatant references to properties like the Sam Raimi trilogy. No one said that. Anyway. I mean, how is how, I mean, how is no I way mean, home no, not seamless? I mean, No Way Home only had like uh, dialogue re references as well as like the, them referencing some of the story points like uh, where Spider Wars like recreated some of the mo moments in animation, so yeah, it is different. Mm, yeah. I don't know See, which one is like better or worse, like uh, referenced. See, kids, this is what you we would consider a straw man. No one was ever going to defend this movie, saying, "But Spider Verse have references too." No. Um, yes, but it was a five-second joke in the opening sequence of the movie. Who said this? Who said this? Shut up. In Spider-Man No Way Home, it is the crux of the entire story. That's not a criticism or an argument. Shut up. Get I mean, to the point. wait, but, uh, the, but okay. the whole story doesn't Maybe rely thinking, on yes. references to the previous movies. Like, the story doesn't happen because of a, of a reference. Uh... Like... I don't know what the criticism here is. Yeah, it's just like, there's fan service that's bad at this point. Like in in both movies, there are uh, there is a device or a or a spell that uh, allows this story to happen. Yeah, and it doesn't happen because it there is a plot because of a, of a that, reference. But... Yes, is it's a plot device that allows these characters to meet. Yeah. Like, okay, like, I get it. The movie has fan service already. Can you make, like, a point yet? No Way Home solely relies on the love of other spider Make a point, bitch! ...and franchises, and therefore nostalgia, to make the story function at all. But is that really such yeah, a- God damn it, no, make a point, please. Like an act- Bad I thing. get it. No, oh, fuck. Yes, and no. let me tell you why. The full screen bullshit, no! It, like- you I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to do it when recording because it fucks it up for some reason.
And also, it take, like, takes five seconds to go in the full screen. Yes. No Way Home solely relies on the love of other Spider-Man friends. Wait, solely relies. Okay. Again, you need to justify that, because that's not why I love the movie. That was, like, secondary. I love the movie because of Tom Holland and his character arc. I, I feel like I've explained this. Yeah, I have explained this on the end before. I'll prob yeah, yeah. I'll probably have to do it again at some point, but fuck, I'm too lazy franchises and therefore nostalgia to make the story function at all but is that really such a bad wait you know hypothetically right this movie could have been like pretty much like pretty much the same if it was just like if they weren't Sp spider-man from the other movies or if they weren't villains from the other movies like if it was just a green goblin from a universe we didn't know like the story could still be the same it's just, like, the characters would probably look different or whatever. Like, yeah, and, I mean, you could still do, like, uh, references to the Raimi and Amazing Spider-Man movies. Like, if this uh, version of, uh, this different version of Green Goblin still said, like, you know, I'm something of a scientist myself. It would still be a reference. Just not true. from, you know, Willem Dafoe. That's true, actually, yeah. Like, it's, like... I mean, they, they, could, they could still do it, just because they have, like the same actors doesn't mean that they could not like rewrite the movie to be just you know the same dialogue with you know yeah yeah <sighs> like two... i mean they could they would probably have to rewrite certain things because you know these are from different universes some to there would be ref like different references maybe one of the spider-man you know if you would change also the two spider-man older ones yeah then may maybe like the and andrew replacement would not talk about like oh i'm lame because i fought a guy in a rhino suit oh right you know yeah they but... would they, they could like change it and maybe say something different like maybe a different reference to a comic book character that ha has yet to appear in a you know a movie Tom Holland or whatever uh, they could have referenced, like, I mean, well, I mean, the, the three Spider-Man in that scene could have bonded over anything, though, really. So, like, that's not even an issue in this hypothetical. Yeah, and, but, and they, like, use references to the older movies, like, you know, Toby doesn't need web shooters or, um, uh, what else? Oh. You know, the, the back issues that uh, <laughs> the two of them talked oh, about. Oh, I, that's a reference to the Spider-Man 2 car scene, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I don't yeah, think I, I realized won. that until now. <laughs> Oops. Uh, um, fuck. You know, I just realized, it, in, in this hypothetical, if they did do that, where, like, they weren't referencing, well, they weren't from the other movies. Like, let's say this is an animated film, like Spider-Verse, right? And they're not from yep. the other movies, it's just, like... Their own, they're just from their own universes. First of all, would they, would she consider it seamless then? Because they're not from the other movies. Like they, it would just be doing what Spider Verse did for the most part, just like some obvious references to the other movies. It would actually be like the same. I think it would be less uh, creative than Spider Verse because Spider Verse had all of these different, absolutely different uh, like styles in animation as oh, well yeah, as characters. Yeah. Like you couldn't do like Spider. Spider-Man Noir in real life, or Spider-Ham. Yeah, in... uh, yeah, you're right there. But she, I'm talking about the um, the fan service being seamless with Miles' story. If 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 it wasn't, if they weren't actually from other movies, like, what's the difference between this and Spider-Verse? Then, like, how? Actually, wait, wait, wait. Let me phrase it like this, right? How do Toby and Andrew get in the way of Tom's story? They don't. I mean, I went into detail on this in the Anomaly video. They expand on his story. Um, they just support him. They support him and help him out. Actually, maybe I should, like, go back to that video and just cut out the part where I'm explaining how they expand his story and shit and just make that its own video. And I can just title it, Hey, if you're debating a No Way Home retard, just send him this video or something. I don't know. Anyway. Um, oh. Oh, yeah, another thing I wanted to say. In the hypothetical where they're not from any other movies, you could still tell the same story of two older Spider-Man helping uh, a younger Spider-Man deal with grief from their own experiences. The story could Definitely. be the same. You, the story could be I mean, you, the same. You, you wouldn't have, like, the same star power, and probably, you know, because 
the exec part of the executive probably really want wanted this movie because of you know nostalgia as well as the fact that you have all of these like older actors rep reprising their roles but you but if you had like original characters original like spider-man as well as original villains you you would have much more freedom with them yeah you know yeah yeah and probably some of the plot issues could could have been much better fixed because oh true. yeah it is it is that part in the anomaly video where he says like why only these villains and why only these Spider-Mans were brought in? Why not the other two different box. ones? Which, yeah, if it would be a live-action movie, that would be like Spider-Verse, where, where they just randomly, randomly pick uh, different characters from different universes, then yeah, it probably would make more sense logically. But, you know, this is kind of the story that we're telling, as well as the fact that we have a, an explanation why more characters don't come in during the story, you know, because of the box containing the spell. Yeah. Uh. Uh. I forgot, I forgot I was gonna say anything, but you're right. You're right. Oh, oh, I remember now. Um, I've had a realization. She's saying the movie is just fan service. That is all it is. And I think my interpretation is that when she was watching the movie, that's all she could think about. She she wasn't actually focusing on like the plot and characters that or or even if she was she was distracted by the thought this is just fan service this is just fan service she even said like I'll show you the truth that these corporations are using you or something like that like we know I accepted it before I watched the movie it's it's basic shit I <laughs> yeah like again like it's kind of I I believe it's just bias in a way like. I, I don't know. But I guess we should just continue. Thing? Yes. And let me tell you why. Let's examine the legacy, the Avengers Spider-Man franchise. Wait, what was the story. question? Ugh. Okay. You may be thinking, yes, No Way Home solely relies on the love of other Spider-Man franchises and therefore nostalgia. No, I wasn't. <laughs> to make the story function at all. No, I wasn't. <laughs> but is that really such a bad thing? Yes. And let me tell you why. Let's examine the legacy, the Avengers Spider-Man. So is it a bad thing that this movie is just nostalgia and fan service, and it's the plot wouldn't work without it? Okay. The franchise leaves. After all the hype about Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire reprising their roles dies down, we're left with the conclusion of a trilogy that Marvel fans have grown to love. Being the final installment of something so prolific, the writers and producers should have been worried oh. about- I forgot to say this earlier, I think. Before we watched this video, when we were looking at other things we could watch, apparently we learned on, like, Brown Table's video that, um, like, I don't know, apparently, like, some the executives wanted to, like, over uh outshine Tom Holland with Andrew and Toby, apparently, but they made sure that Tom still wasn't overshadowed by them. And that's interesting. I don't know if it would prove her point necessarily, but... I don't know. I feel like there was some point well, er earlier, but she said that I wanted to say that too. But um, let's uh, uh, let's hit the end of the argument and then let's uh, respond. Yeah, you're the, right. about the one about Arch legacy. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. Thing. Yes, and let me tell you why. Let's examine the legacy the Avengers Spider-Man franchise leaves. After all the hype about Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire reprising their roles dies down, we're left with the conclusion of a trilogy that Marvel fans have grown to love. Being the final installment of something so prolific, the writers and producers should have been worried about crafting a bittersweet yet fitting ending for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. That's, e that's exactly what they did. <laughs> okay. This movie should make us feel more emotional than either of the other two that came before it. That's Be exactly what it did. The end of this movie revolves around Peter Parker losing Aunt May and facing the ramifications that everyone who's ever met him or developed a relationship with him doesn't remember that he exists. He has to say goodbye to everyone. This should be the emotional punch in the gut that we've been building up to for the past three movies, not- I'm scared. <laughs> including Spider-Man's appearance in other MCU films. And while this ending is not inherently void of emotion, it just doesn't feel earned. 
Something what? felt extremely off about everything this movie was trying to do, and when I went to do some digging on what happened during its production to make it like this, I figured wait. I'd find some typical- Wait, wait. No, explain why. You, now you're talking about how it became this way. You didn't explain why! But, yeah. This Bitch! Got oh, okay, okay. Uh, she says that, uh, you know, it's not a- well, it's supposed to be emotional, it, we should- feel really sad about the ending at, because it, it is sad but you know now uh, Audrey it, be, uh, wait go ahead she says that it is kind of emotional but not uh, really so uh, now she's going to probably say the argument that the, the script had to be re re written I, yeah, even during I filming I don't fucking care please talk about the actual movie Aud yeah the final the final product that we got at the end. Yeah, Audrey Greywind, actually explain anything, challenge, impossible. Whole bullshit where the writers want inherently void of emotion, it just doesn't feel earned. She just declares it's true, objectively. I, like, if you're just saying it didn't feel earned to me, then alright, you're still not making an argument, but sure. But she just declares it to be objectively true. I mean, something she says that uh, it is emotional, but uh, something fell felt off to her. That's, okay. that's what she says. So ca she kind of says what you want her to say. I like, guess, but when she says feels off, isn't she like referring to like how it came this way? I mean, yeah, yeah. She's going to like talk oh, about thought, the production oh of this movie, so. When she's, yeah. I, I, I guess I'm interpreting here, but when well, she says the hmm. feel odd thing, I thought it, she was. It does really, suck, like. Uh, she's referring to the production. Like I thought she was saying, uh, this feels what, like it was rewritten or something like, like that. Like uh, we really need some examples. Why, why it's uh, off? Why, why did you feel off during this movie? Any explanation at all, actually. Like imagine if she was like a test uh, watcher for this movie. Uh, sheep, she was there. What the fuck? God damn it. Uh. Hello? Hello? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. I, I don't know fuck? what happened. I My couldn't hear you. got, like, unplugged or something, like, a, f a few minutes ago, but... Anyway, I don't I get I don't know if I was muted to like my recording too, but anyway, um yeah, you're right. She isn't explaining anything at all. Wait, I, actually, did you hear me say Audrey Greywind trying to explain anything challenge impossible? No. No, no, I did not hear that. God damn it. I thought it was funny. Fuck. Anyway, <laughs> well, this one thing is that I watched that the uh, her you know, that, uh, how to train your dragon video, you know, that critique there. And I think it is a pretty good video, honestly. Oh. Even though I haven't seen, like, any of the dragon shows where that is basically about, the, you know, you have the movies and then you have things like comic, comic books and shows about that universe. So, and, and that was about the new, newest show. That came out yeah but but i really enjoyed watching it it is a, a really good video so and that's kind of why i wanted to cover cover this because i don't think this is like a bad channel or something like that i really enjoyed that video so uh and i kind sure. of understand what where someone really doesn't like where like you know you have these co corporations trying to you know only do it because of the nostalgia, like. Ex but like, again, uh, like, like again, they are like creative. Trying, sorry. You know, like Disney is trying to do, is doing with Star Wars, where they yeah. just now they're just relying on nostalgia. So, I yeah. kind of understand, but I don't think it's that bad here with Spider Man. So yeah, again, the they are create they're still creatives making that that care about the story of the movies, though. I mean, I guess that might be true for Disney Star Wars. Uh, never mind. Maybe with the maybe with Mando season one, I think 
can, they kind of tried. Maybe they tried a little bit, but wait. Then after that one, they really dropped the ball. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. Did you hear me say? Because I pointed, I, I thought I pointed out. Uh, I guess it, I don't know if it was hearing me that she's just making declarative statements. Like she's just saying the movie. What was it? Fuck. God damn. Why did that have only, to happen? Goodbye to was only everyone. nostalgia. This should be oh. the emotion. Well, no, 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 it was the ending isn't an emotional punch. Obje she just declares it. It just objectively isn't. But then I guess we were talking about how she implied it was just... No, all right. Yeah, I remember now. ...that we've been building up to for the past three movies. Let, let's just try to get to the substance, if there is any in this fucking video. Not including Spider-Man's appearance in other MCU films. And while this ending is not inherently void of emotion, it just doesn't feel earned. Something felt extremely off about everything this movie was trying to do. And when I went to do some digging on what happened during its production... Yeah, I'm pretty sure her saying something feels off. Like, she's not saying, in my opinion, the emotional, um, it, the ending didn't have any emotion. I'm pretty sure she, she's saying, I, I, I knew this movie was rewritten every day or something. It seems more like that, but... Um, anyway... <laughs> You hear me now, right? Yes, 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 I hear you. Okay, hear you. what the fuck even was that? <laughs> Never mind. ...to make it like this, I figured I'd find some typical bullshit... <laughs> what made it... what made it like this. ...bit where the writers wanted to go one way, but the studio wanted to go another, and we end up with a compromise that made the whole narrative seem messy. But as it turns out, it was so much worse than that. No Way Home began filming in late 2020, and at that time, they still didn't know if all the actors from the previous franchise- it, Wait, was that the CEO of Sex on the right? Is that- <laughs> <laughs> His franchises, i.e. the villain slash other Spider-Man, were going to be available to make it in the film. And they couldn't just continue with a few of them, they needed to have everyone or no one. This led to major confusion on set and with the story in general. Hell, when they started filming, the third act hadn't even been written yet. Let me repeat that. When they started- yeah, you, you don't need to repeat it. I, I get it. Anyway, can we talk about the end product now? <laughs> can we talk about the substance now? Filming, the script wasn't even finished. So you see, pointing that out doesn't make the movie bad by itself. And this isn't remember, remember that Star Wars uh, almost was a failure? Yeah, yeah. Like everything, went, like uh, so many things went wrong with the original Star Wars movie. They had to cut out like a lot of shit. I know that. <laughs> like, it, it, yep. Uh, yeah, like even all the even the actors like la la like hated the dialogue at first. At, at, uh. Oh yeah, Harrison Ford. I think really hated the dialogue. <laughs> and that, and I think like a lot of the things uh, in he had the uh, input on some of the things in like Empire Strikes Back like uh, the famous line I love you I know was, yeah I think his input yeah uh yeah it does seem like uh, now nah, I'm, I'm, I'm changing this up Never plus, mind. yeah plus it's like uh, also with Mission Impossible Fallout where you know that the movie had some issues during filming, but it they were it was a stuck to landing really fantastically and made a really awesome movie. Yeah, the end. honestly, I should probably like, I don't, I think I like missed some of, I think I missed out on that EFAP arc because I kind of just know like the gist of it. I think it was just uh, one episode. I think. Oh, okay. Well, it was that episode where Southpaw was like introduced. Yeah, he, he got invited on and. You know, it was the first time to take talk together. Before he burned the Star Wars... Uh, fuck, the Spider-Man community Man. down. Oh, that was... <laughs> yeah. Before it all went crashing down. I mean, they made uh, Toy Story 4 even before uh, the Spider-Man, you know, debate and all of that. Well, was Toy Story 4 controversial? Oh, it was really bad. Oh, well, I know it was uh, bad, but, like, did anyone... Like, was there ever, like, a war or something about... No, no, no. I mean, like, uh, South Pole... The, those were, were, like, the big episodes that I remember. Oh, right, South right. Pole were in, like, 
outside of the Spider-Man stuff, I know Mission Impossible, as well as The Last of Us 2 and the Toy Story episode. Yeah. If she, I wonder if she watches our video, she's, she just gets to this part of like, who the fuck is South Paul? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, it is kind of. Uh. Coming from some Randy on set that had a vendetta because the film did and with the story in general. Hell, when they started filming, the third act hadn't even been written yet. Let me repeat um, that. No, please. Oh, when okay. they started filming, the script wasn't even finished. And this isn't okay. coming from some Randy on set that had a vendetta because the film didn't go a certain way and they I, kept having to change it. I don't fucking care. It. This came directly from Tom Holland. It even got to the point that he didn't believe the stuff his... So we are now halfway through the video. There hasn't been any substance at all. It's all just been declaring this is fan service. Th this has no emotion at the end. Uh, or this is just fan service. And uh, I don't know. The movie, they were rewriting the, f the last act. There's no actual points at all. Even. Like, it's, it's not even like we, we don't actually have anything to argue against, really. <laughs> Character was saying, so he... The lead actor, who shouldn't feel obligated to take narrative production into his hands at all, went to the writers and pitched a completely different ending, which resulted in them oh, I didn't know about that. rewriting it again, and I'm assuming it's the ending that we got. Alright. Hmm. That's cool. You know what? Tom Holland's a cool guy. You know what? That That's probably why the movie was so great, because of his input. Why does this even matter? What I'm trying yeah, to- Yeah, yeah. You do know what I'm thinking now. Point out is that it was never the writer's intention to give audiences a fitting conclusion for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Okay, well- I mean, we we don't know that. We, we don't know what the original plan was. Wait, wait, that's true. But, wait, wait hold on a second. So she started this off uh, by saying the ending ha doesn't have emotional impact. And she justifies that by saying the last act wasn't finished and they started filming. She- No! <laughs> no, you haven't explained- You need to explain what's wrong with the ending sequence. I mean, a lot of movies, uh, you know- Do that, I think. A lot of movies but... these, these days, especially with uh, such a big- uh, Because they're using green, sc green screen a lot that- Right. They're- they spend more time editing the movie and, you know, adding special effects than, you know, having the actors act, you know. So basically, they get all the scenes with the actors and then they you know, edit around it, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, we can't, we don't really know what uh, what really happened in the, dr right. during the production. Yeah, all right. We don't know every everything that happened. Maybe it was I really. It doesn't matter. But yeah, you're right. I, I mean, if it if it was such a terrible production, then why didn't some of the actors like speak out or even sue Disney, like uh, Scarlett Johansson? May, well, maybe because this movie was successful, unlike Black Widow. So true. Yeah. I feel bad uh, if Black if Scarlett watched this movie. I feel bad that she, <laughs> she has to compare hers to it. But I. I feel really bad for her. Like she was there from the beginning, and and she got that uh, shitty sorry, movie. Sorry. Well, yeah, but what was the like lawsuit again exactly? Uh. If you don't I, know, that's I'm, fine. I'm I, sorry. Okay, I'm trying to remember what it was about. Uh, no, I, I don't remember. Sorry, I. Oh, that's I don't right. really remember what what it was about, and I don't really want to say something. Uh, untrue so so all right i i'm i might try to find i will try to find it out i'll google google it okay well while you're doing that all right audrey let me try to help you out a little bit here so what you should do is go the ending scene of no way home was not emotionally impactful because whatever your reasoning would be i don't know because Wait, who's this? Who's Peter Parker? Who's this guy I'm watching? I don't remember or something. I don't know. 
uh, why? I, I don't. Oh. I, I can't even make up a reason. You would say it's not impactful, but oh, okay, okay. I, I don't know why she sued Disney. It was because they wanted to, they put the Black Widow on Disney Plus, and she wanted the movie to only be in theaters. Huh. To, you know, to get more money. Oh. Because okay. uh, you know, if it's on a streaming service, then you know, it's like you only buy buy it for like a month and then you can watch anything for free unless it's you know Mulan then you have to <laughs> buy, buy the movie wait why did Black Widow get those privileges then the fuck Disney I don't know it, it's, it is said here that it was settled the uh, dispute was settled and uh, they have a mutual agreement regarding the movie Black Widow so I don't know. Maybe they... I don't know what their relationship relationship is. Maybe Scar Scarlett Johansson will no longer work for Disney anymore. Or maybe they're good. No, I, I don't know. Well, interesting, but... Uh, yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, it's good to, like, <laughs> explain your reasoning, right? The... The last scene is not impactful because I, I, I honestly can't even make up a reason. Uh, I don't know. Peter's shirt had mustard on it or something. See, that's stupid, but it is a reason. You did explain yourself. See, I'm helping you out here. It was never the writer's intention to give audiences a fitting conclusion for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So, well, actually, what would be a more, like, what what would be the fitting conclusion then? Like, again, just explain, but... It was their intention to get as many people to the theater in light of Marvel movies continuously bombing after COVID forced... Uh, well, about the theater, uh, like, no fucking shit. I know they want money. How do you think otherwise? Everyone knows that. Man. I, I, uh... I'll be right back. I need to go to the toilet. Oh, please. should I pause it? Should I pause it? Probably after the recording. So yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I think it stopped right now, or? Oh, I just unpaused it. I, I thought you were telling me to do that. Oops. Okay. Fuck! I don't know. What were you talking about? No, no, about you don't have to. Well, we can return to the video if, if you want. I was gonna, like, say something witty, I think, but I don't remember what it was now. <laughs> what I'm trying to point out is that it was never the writer's intention to give audiences a fitting conclusion for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. It was their intention to get as many people to the theater in light of Marvel movies continuously- Oh, hey Rage, did you know- uh, uh, This is gonna be a shock. Did you know Marvel wants to make money when they make their films? I mean, duh. Oh, you did know. Wow, you're pretty big brain. I, I didn't know till five minutes ago but bombing after covid forced so many of them to premiere on disney plus do you really think it's a coincidence that this is marvel's first major superhero film to be released solely in theaters since the start of the pandemic aside from these two i guess you can't <laughs> yeah <laughs> your point is that this movie was corporately decided to be the first one released in theaters because uh, anyway anyway whatever your point is it has it, it, it your your even though your point has exceptions your point is still right anyway again <laughs> also as i was wanting to, i was as, i was wanting to say i don't fucking care I don't care if they decided. Okay, now that COVID's not a problem, this is the first movie we gotta release for that money, or whatever the fuck conspiracy you're trying to tote, or whatever, whatever you're trying to say. I don't care. Talk about the movie. I mean, like the other Marvel movies, probably also bombed because they were they were really bad, and people didn't want to go to see that see them. Yeah. So. Like I've I, I I actually did 
fucking watch Black Widow and Shang-Chi in theaters, and I'll never get those hours back. It's it was just oh, it was incredible. It was incredibly Honestly. boring, both of them. But and Black Widow was insulting, honestly. So. Well, yeah, yeah, like objectively, they're bad movies. But like when watching them, I was just I felt nothing at all. I didn't feel anything. It was just I was just sitting in a chair for two hours, and that was or four hours counting both of them. Uh, anyway. Like, again, a shied from niche too, I guess. <laughs> no. God damn, this is stupid. Gimmick. Now, this is obviously just my theory, and you can feel however you... Uh, we... They want to make money. We know. Y see Doctor Strange right there? That's us to you. Or... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Audrey trying to explain the concept of companies wanting money. To the rest of the world, I. You want about it, but it just seriously angers me how the makers of this film can take arguably the most genuine Marvel superhero in existence. You know, if you want, like, if you just want to criticize capitalism, like that's all fine and good. Don't like, d don't pretend you're criticizing a movie though. And do something as Marvel's. Fuck! I got the first major superhero. Hero film to be released solely in theaters since the start of the pandemic. Shy now, this from is these obviously two. just my theory, and you can feel however you want about it. But it just seriously angers me how the makers of this film can take arguably the most genuine Marvel superhero in existence and do something so disingenuous with his story. What did they do that was disingenuous? You haven't told me yet. We need examples. Holy shit! Them. Like. What the fuck? Rage. Because from what, what we see is it's a really respectful towards I I couldn't I, his it, newest Spider Man. I struggle to imagine anything more respectful in my opinion, and I could explain why if you want me to, but I don't even think like I'm justified to do like I'm I'm required to do that if this is the shit you're bringing. Uh <laughs> Rage. Like when you first saw this, like like, at around this point in the video, what what was your reaction? Because I'm questioning reality right now. I, I was really confused, because uh, at first she said that, the, the, that there was emotional in, an, an emotional ending, but then but that only, like, she felt off about it. But now she's saying that the, this movie will have a really bad legacy because it it has, you know... All of these different uh, characters from other movies, dude. For some reason, you're right. You're right, dude. That is what she said. Um, dude, I should. We should make a video called "How Not to Make a Movie Review 101," and we just start with number one. When you make a point, explain it, and then the video just ends. <laughs> uh. Could have spent this last movie making Peter and MJ's relationship actually compelling in any way. Explain how they're not compelling. I mean, I don't know. I find it compelling how, like, Peter was always, like, the optimistic, hopeful one, trying to see the good in the situation. But she was always the pessimistic one, and they, like, they see each other's sides. And, like, Peter was the one that trusted that, like, if anything went wrong, she would press the box and kill the villains. And I and I also, well, I guess it's not related to the relationship, but I found it interesting how Andrew was able to make up for his mistake and save her life. So, so Tom doesn't have to go through what he went through. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, well... We, we really... We really, we really need the examples. Besides the whole, she was virtually useless in the first movie, and in the second well, movie... Well, useless? She wasn't, like, a player I mean, in she... the first movie. Like, what do you mean? You... She I did... mean, she was a side character. She didn't... And it was only re revealed at the end of the movie that the, she has that victim, MJ, so... Yeah, what do you mean? Useless isn't the right word. Like, she wasn't meant to be useful? Like, I don't... I don't know. Movie Peter suddenly likes her for no reason. They could have. Uh, 
he's a fucking teenage boy. She's a teenage girl who's also intelligent, by the way. Like, they're both really good at schooling, too. And they I think, uh, and, and I they, think, uh, we... Oh, no, no, finish, finish, finish. And they also did have, like, a friendship already to some degree, but... Like, I don't think... But I don't think I need it to... I don't think, like, the movie needs to explain why, at first, a, teen, a teenage boy would want to go out with a teenage girl. I don't think that needs... Especially Spider-Man, but... I mean, we can... Vo I remember in the Weekend Warriors uh, video on uh, Far From Home that he had this same issue, and then I think he kind of agreed with Moller, Moller that the yeah, it is probably just a teenage crush that they are just they just like each other. They like uh, you know. Yeah. They I have mean... an attract. They ha have an attraction to one another, one another. I mean, if they're already, like, friends, I feel like it would come naturally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus. At least this, like, is an argument of some kind, though. I have, have to be fair. We're, we're I mean, yeah, better. it is It is an argument. It is something. It, she, she's gotten, she evolved by, like, one millipoint. Wait, uh, I don't even know if that's a term. Never mind made us actually care about Aunt May, besides spending the first two movies making her nothing but a punchline, and then in a three-minute scene convincing Peter- Eh. I mean, again, they could- I mean, like, they- I mean, like, with MJ- or, well, never mind. With Aunt May, like, they could have done more, but, like, I'd ha I, I have to rewatch Far From Home again, but in Homecoming, like, she had, like, a- like, I mean- she had nice talks with him, like, she, see, uh, she first, like, said, if you see anything serious, like, the ATA team robbery, you run away, like, and, but, in like, uh, when Peter gets fired from the Stark internship, she, like, says, I used to run out, too, at your age, and, like, I, I, I'm not judging you, I just want to know what's going on, like, like, yeah, it could have, like, maybe it's not much in the first two movies, but... She's clearly like a nice mother to her. Like Peter says, he she doesn't want he doesn't want her to stress out over him being Spider Man. To be honest, though, in my opinion, I feel like the scene, the three minute scene of Aunt May and Peter talking at feast with Norman Osborn, in my opinion, I feel like that's already enough. Honestly, like that's, yeah, and she's uh, and she's about to criticize it. Yeah, I feel like that scene is all like honestly perfect already, like in its own right. You know what? You remember that fucking, what was it? One marvelous scene thing? Maybe I'll do that for the feast scene, dude. Maybe. Maybe. Because, like, honestly, I don't think, I think that's all the setup you really need. Like, Aunt May believes in helping people. Uh, she tells Peter that she these people are mentally ill and they need help. They're down on their luck and you could, and you could help them. And even though it would be easier if you just sent them home, you you know what did you know what is right, and Peter does know that. But at that time, he still thinks that he doesn't know they're going to die yet. And uh, and then it comes back brilliantly when she dies that even though it killed Aunt May, even though it killed her, and had horrible consequences on Peter's life, it was still the right thing to do. He still saved the lives of the villains by not letting Doctor Strange press the box. It was still the responsible thing to do. Like, yeah, that's it. That's all you need, really. Like, you know, Uncle Ben, like, we, you could say Uncle Ben only had fucking five minutes of screen time. And that's it. That's enough. That's all you need, really. They, they used it well. Uh, that villains deserve a second chance for no um, that she wasn't really saying they deserve a second chance. That's not, that's not really what the, that's not really what she was saying, but. She probably would believe that anyway, but... Peter suddenly likes her for no reason. They could have made us actually care about Aunt May, besides spending the first two movies making her nothing but a punchline, and then in a three-minute scene convincing oh. Peter... Oh, well, I did prove that she wasn't nothing but a punchline, but... Peter, ...that villains deserve a second chance for no reason besides the script needed to for, give her something. For no reason. <laughs> I, I can't do it, man. I can't... Take this shit no more, man. Wait, I showed you that clip, right? Yes. Okay, you get the meme. You get the meme. <laughs> I, I just wanted to fucking watch No Way Home, but these fucking people, they had to go and... <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, uh... Uh, yeah. 
so fuck why did i God, I, I i get so sidetracked easily it's for no reason besides right no reason okay so i'm not even sure how to respond to that no reason so in the scene aunt may meets and is trying to help to like completely like defenseless me clearly mentally ill homeless person of norman osborn who has like no family like no company anymore like no life at all like her i mean her, like her job is to help homeless people it's a homeless center yeah yeah and she sees norman is like oh are they all like this and peter says basically and he's like oh we should probably help them I, I'm i sorry, reading comprehension, I don't know. I, I, why do I have to, again, every goddamn time we talk about this movie, I we have to, like, explain Peter and Aunt May not wanting villains to die. What the, what is wrong with you fucking people? Like, what? Why? If you're... If you're whole video is about you know how nostalgia is bad and how this movie doesn't really deliver anything so then you have to at least complain about something like oh the characters are not even that well developed or you know it's not a good finale for these characters yeah they're still one one dimensional yeah you need to find some sort of some sort of an excuse you know what I think would actually be like we could show an example of something being just fan service about substance is um the dare not the daredevil scene but him catching the brick that wasn't really necessary to the plot I, although it did show public opinion of Peter would still be an issue so it's like kind of useful but like I don't know it like it's technically useful but like, the point is, showing off Daredevil wasn't really important for the plot of this movie. So we could, mm -hmm. we could, for the sake of argument, say that that was just fan service. See? 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 We had a point. We gave an example. We explained the example. Is it that fucking hard? <sighs> and I mean some of the other memes, like, uh, like, uh, the Norman quote. Oh, right. Like, but... the... Like there is a, there is a in universe reason for why he says it. Yeah, because so, he can help with the uh, curing science. Of so it, it did actually have a purpose. So that's not. I don't think that's the best example, really. Oops. No, well, no. I, I'm just saying like a, a fan service that uh, works in the movie, like yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like uh, them discussing uh, Toby's like web fluid. Like where it comes from, you know that conversation. Yeah. And what, how it works. So. Oh, I think. Sorry, sorry. You let you finish. I was gonna. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I I finished my thing. Right. I think again. Let's point to the Force Force Awakens as like an example of just fan service. Like that scene where it showed her when she picked when Ray picked up Luke's lightsaber and it showed her flashbacks of like the OT or whatever. Like, that was just fan service, because not only did that not make sense with the previous movies, that didn't offer anything to the plot of this movie, or the sequels. I mean, I guess, the, theoretically, it could have if The Last Jedi didn't fuck it up, but, like, that's an example. Like, actually, I think, like, Mahler and his critique of The Force Awakens, like, he took the scene where, like, Han was, like, looking in, like, reverence of the Millennium Falcon... He like took that as like a the, like an example to talk about fan service in general. It was it was very I mean, interesting. But I mean, then in we compare this like a Norman scene where he says the meme yeah. to Palpatine in Episode Nine, oh. where he where he quotes, <laughs> yeah, Episode Three. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, well, there that the point of that is to not explain, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Reference. R R Reference. Drag, oh, drag, no, 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 um, like, put under the rug on why, why Palpatine is alive. Like, just, just oh, yeah, sweep yeah. that under the rug. Uh, you know, dark yeah. side, unnatural, boom. <sighs> fucking, fucking, rise of Skywalker, Jesus. I don't think fanboys watch that movie, actually. <laughs>
I have to force I mean, him, though. I have to force him. I, I wouldn't recommend it to him at, <laughs> at any day. You know what? Out of curiosity, which one, like, do you like... Which one do you hate more? The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker? I'll be controversial at... Controver <clears throat> controversial. Yeah. And say Book of Boba Fett. Oh. But uh, no, no. But seriously, uh, out of episode uh, eight or nine, mm, which one do I hate more? Well, I think episode nine is worse. Yeah. But I think uh, Last Jedi, I hate it more. I I don't know. I think I hate the Rise of Skywalker more. It's definitely like worse though, because like. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the rise of Skywalker. It's another. Some of it is hate, but other things, it's so bad. It's funny bad. Yeah. Like I don't know. I'm... I I think the Last Jedi has like some good scenes though. I think. I can't tell you what it, they are. But... It has it has one good scene, where Luke and R two meet for the first time. That that is the only legi legitimately good scene. Yeah. And it has fan service where. Where R two plays, you know, the recording of right. of Leia from Episode Four. I like how that recording doesn't convince him to not try to stop the resistance from getting genocided, but it does convince him to tell Ray the Jedi suck. By the way, I just have that notification. Is that is that it's probably Golden Foxy? Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, right. Anyway, yeah, you know, but. Like, uh, I'm I'm trying to think like, because with the uh, episode nine we already had the leaks, we kind of knew what what was going to happen in the in there. With episode eight, it was like, because at first I liked the movie when I first saw it, but then during the coming months I started started seeing more and more issues until like, you know, I got convinced yeah. that is that it is a really bad movie. And it kind of opened my eyes to this kind of world of media criticism. Yeah, you know, what's f interesting, I actually, like, really liked The Last Jedi when I, when, I, when I first watched it. I think I might have loved it at first, after the first viewing, I'm not sure. I think I actually kept, like, the ticket to The Last Jedi, because, like, man, I gotta remember this shit. But then, like, I, you know, I was just bored, so I watched reviews of it, and I was like, oh, yeah. Those are good points, and I was like, "Oh," and I and I was kind of just like, "Oh yeah, the movie is bad, whatever." <laughs> like it wasn't even like I don't know, like I, it wasn't like uh, I wasn't like offended by it or whatever that there was criticism. At first, of it. I at first I was on the side of people defending the movie, but the, as the time progressed and I saw more and more criticisms, I I really started hating more and more of the from the movie, and I. I remember one of the videos that really pushed me to, to hating the movie was Wolf's video on The Last uh, Jedi. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know that the video that con finally convinced me on on why I hate the movie was, uh, funnily enough, Sh Shrefila's, Shrefila's uh, productions video yeah. on subverting expect expectations where he compared The Last Jedi with Infinity War. And, you know... Where he compares uh, with how to subvert expectations. Yeah, yeah. I like how he pointed out how like the t like in the Last Jedi, even though everything is fucked and there's only like twelve rebels on the Millennium Falcon, they're all like really happy and like yeah, let's. It's like the ending of Return of the Jedi almost, like the way it's shot. Well, in Infinity War, they just they're just like quiet, and Captain America says, "Oh God." <laughs> you know, I, I kind of wish he uh, compared it to The Empire Strikes Back, though, because The Empire Strikes Back was basically, like, the same ending, effectively, for the Rebellion, except I think that, actually, like, I think the Rebellion was worse off after TLJ than it was after Empire, but... Oh, absolutely, like, they had an entire fleet in in uh, Empire. Yeah. They still have a lot of allies uh, through the galaxy, you know... That we don't even see until Return of the Jedi, like Mon Mothma. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, you're right. And after TLJ, like, it was, that was literally the worst state the Rebellion has ever been in, like, all of Star Wars. But, absolutely. And they're like, yeah, let's do it! And then and the Empire Strikes Back, they're all, like, very solemn and quiet. And I think, like, I think someone pointed out that, like, the Rebellion is just, like, a defeated army leave, returning home or something like that. It's, it's all very just, I don't know, mature, I guess? Like, subtle? Like even though even though everything even though they lost, they're, they'll they'll come they'll rise back again, but they're just quiet for now. It, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, That's there was this one really good uh, quote on subverting expectations, but I don't know if I'll ever uh, ever find it. I might not be able to quote it word from word, but if I okay. find it, I will post it here. Oh, that's all right. Oh, thank you. Uh, although I guess to be fair, in the resistance, uh, in the in after TLJ, all they have to beat is Kylo Ren, while Luke had to beat Vader and Palpatine. So, I but guess. The, <laughs> but the First Order like has so many resources, and that uh, and in yeah. you know Rise of Skywalker, there's even more of them. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. But I, for Rey, she 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 shouldn't have any problems. And like uh, the it, but... the sequel trilogy is full of contradictions. Like they want it to be like the original trilogy, but the way the original the original trilogy ended, the sequel trilogy the way it it is now would be literally impossible. Yeah. Like how could the such a strong force like the first or- order ever rise? How could they turn an entire planet into a galaxy bas uh, now? Uh, well, how... a planet-busting mega weapon that absorbs stars. Yeah, how did they like? How did they build how... that? But the Empire couldn't when it was in charge for nineteen years. Uh... How can they have such a big fleet even after they lose the, their strongest weapon? And if they had a big fleet, why didn't they already have that fleet in the Force Awakens against uh, on the Rebel planet? But. Anyway, we're, we're off subject. Those movies are bad. <laughs> the script needed to give her something to do. Other suddenly likes her for, for no okay. reason. They could have made us actually care about Aunt May, besides spending the first two movies making her nothing but a punchline, and then in a three-minute scene convincing Peter that villains deserve a second chance, for no reason besides the script needed to give her something to do. Other things that irked me included the runtime, I think that the two and a half hours was completely unwarranted. Wait, 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 the did she say they needed... Dimensions... Wait, I, I, I might have missed it. Did she say Aunt May needed something to do? Two uh, minutes making her nothing but a punchline, and then in know. a three-minute scene convincing Peter that villains deserve a second chance for no reason besides the script needed to give her something to do. Yeah, okay, you're stupid. Now, this might seem kind of funny if, like, any of the EFAB audience watched this, which I doubt they actually would, but... Uh, the themes, though, like it, again, well, actually, yeah, like again, it the the point is that even though Peter has doing the right thing made him suffer beyond belief, he would still do it. He would still take the hard hard road because it's the responsible thing to do, because that's what Aunt May believed, and that's what the ending represents. That's what the others. That's what the other Spider Man already know, and that's what they. Tr- try to make sh- like that, 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 that that's what they try to tell tom like that that's what the entire movie is about thematically that's what the green goblin is basically trying to like tempt peter away from aunt may's philosophy into killing him that that's what the like the entire movie is about basically you're wrong reading comprehension other things that irked me included the runtime i think that the two- don't care didn't ask Two and a half hours was completely unwarranted. The whole mirror dimension. Don't care. Didn't ask. Mention scene literally made me nauseated to look at. And the intended. Don't care. Didn't ask. Intended effect worked way better in Spider Verse. Why was? Don't care. Didn't ask. Was Toby Maguire getting stabbed by the Green Goblin made so dramatic just for it not to matter and him to be like, eh, I'm fine. I've been stabbed before. Why was? Uh, I don't. I don't know. What do you think, Rage? Oh, because, uh, I mean, it would probably shock you to the audience, and maybe a lot some people w- would think that m- maybe they, they'd kill t- 
Toby off for yeah. him, you know, to pass the mantle. Yeah. I mean, it would it would probably suck because you know it would probably piss off most people. Yeah. As I well mean... as considering what the uh, MC was do was doing with its previous movies, it would be really terrible. But the fact that they he was only hurt and was uh, you know fine afterwards was probably a bigger bigger twist than him if he if he died so yeah i mean it is like a fake out death kind of but i don't know maybe like you know you know what i think thematically it shows that doing the right thing still hurt can hurt you and hurt toby cuz that's what green goblin was basically trying to say is uh, yeah, but anyway, they still didn't kill him, though. Tom still cured him, because it's the right thing to do, even though Toby got stabbed. Toby, even though he was stabbed, still would have stopped Tom from killing Norman. That's, yeah. So, you know what? Get fucked by the themes. Doctor Strange punching Peter out of his physical body made to be such a groundbreaking discovery for him, only for it never to be brought up or used again. The ending what? What are you fucking rambling about? Like, why does it need to be used again i don't what why why was oh oh why was luke in a new hope why was anakin's lightsaber given to luke shown to be this important thing when it was never used again in that movie like i don't know it's just a visual i guess i mean it's important for the fight scene because he's in his he's in the mirror dimension he's in the doctor strange world that's why it's important Doctor, she doesn't fight Doctor Strange in the rest of the movie, so he wouldn't it wouldn't be used on him again. I don't. What is this? What? King fight was kind of cool, but I think the statue only for it never to be brought up or used again. The ending fight was kind of cool, but I think the Statue of Liberty wasn't the best choice for a location. They don't care, didn't ask. It's a remote. It's a remote. It's a remote location, so that not many people will be hurt if they fight there but it's also attention second, grabbing too yes that's the second point that they can you know uh give that video to j jonah jameson so that all the villains will exa know exactly where to find him exactly so there are so there are two reasons why they chose the statue and, of and, liberty and third of all the f tom holland's final battle in this trilogy was him fighting on captain america's shield which he started his journey with us stealing Captain America's shield in Civil War. Boom. Three. You're fucked by the themes again. There were no real consequences on their surroundings that the characters had to be aware of. You lit it. You are showing. Uh, 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 you are showing the scene where MJ is falling to her death because of the environment getting destroyed. Also, they were fighting on Captain America's shield at the end. What? Why does... Why does it need to affect the environment anyway? Like, what? 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 Huh? So, the stakes were pretty low. Also... What? <laughs> so, the stakes were low because they didn't affect the environment? Even though you're showing the scene where the environment was affected. To matter and him to be like, eh, I'm fine. I've been stabbed before. Why was Doctor Strange punching Peter out of his physical body made to be such a groundbreaking discovery for him, only for it never to be brought up or used again? The ending fight was kind of cool, but I think the Statue of Liberty wasn't the best choice for a location. There were no real consequences on their surroundings that the characters had to be aware of. So the stakes were pretty low. Also, the statue- Yeah, she actually did say there were no consequences on their surroundings. That means the stakes are low. So I don't think you know what stakes are. Um, the movie, the threat is that the fucking multiverse is going to like destroy, be, destroy itself or that all the Spider-Man the... or villains are going to come into this world from the entire multiverse. And Peter has yeah, to sacrifice. Yeah, if, if the box is, if the box is destroyed, and after it is, Peter has to sac sacrifice his identity. Yeah, like Peter had to sacrifice his entire life, basically, just to save either the multiverse or this or this world from the multiverse. So it's at least a planet level threat, at least. Uh, 
What? Also, even if you ignore the box, the emotional stakes are if Peter's going to kill the Green Goblin or not. Basically. Uh, Jesus Christ, you're stupid. Liberty is on a fucking island. How did Spider-Man even get there? It's possible he could have taken a portal and I just... You know, you can get to the Statue of Liberty in the Spider-Man 2 game, but I guess you need to swing off the Mysterio shit, to be fair. Um, how did they get there? Yeah, wait! You know, he could have just slingshotted. You know, in like the... Actually, I don't know if you would know, Rage, but in the Spider-Man 3 game, you could just slingshot yourself from buildings. You could have done that. Yeah, but, you know, Dark Hawk, how he got there, you know, that is oh. probably the issue. Well, no, no, again, dude, he rebelled that shit. He, he took his Doc Ock claws and started spinning them like a helicopter and flew his way there. We know this. Like like the Inquisitors. Yes. <laughs> that was Rebels. Yes. I, I, I hope that they will do it in Kenobi. I want that show <laughs> to be really bad, and I want them to do it. Yes. Also, they're stupid. Uh, I because I, I know those, those were lightsabers before they were made canon in the Disney stuff. They were selling like they were selling them like th that gimmick of spinning the double bladed lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> because I had because I had a uh, General Grievous like two lightsabers and, and oh. you had two lightsabers and oh, they came with with the. Uh, yeah, with a piece where you could connect them, and then you right. can like spin them. I have like that. I maybe have I have that. it, or maybe I passed it down to some of other family members. But I definitely had those, and yeah, basically they took this toy gimmick and they put it in a in a Star Wars show. Yeah, they really did. But <laughs> yeah, that's. True. How does like how does the lightsaber carry their weight? The, I know I don't know they're plasma blades. They it shouldn't be possible. It's just they a metal just pipe. Fall. No no I'm I mean the blade like the blades shouldn't be able to to you yeah. know elevate them. Yeah the blades don't weigh anything. The only thing that they only they're just carrying metal pipes and spinning them and that makes them fly. Uh. Okay anyway. Um, <laughs> my memory is really bad today. The stakes were pretty low. Also, the Statue of Liberty is on a fucking island. This shit. Yeah, like, he could have swung, they could have swung from a helicopter, from, like, a boat. Maybe they did just swim there. <laughs> they could have maybe just jumped, like, they could have just done, like, a super jump or something. They have super strength. Like, it's possible. I, I think the slingshot thing makes the most sense, probably. Wait! Is it not possible, like, could, the, could they not, like, get, like, go to New York, right? Get as, like, close to the Statue of Liberty as they can. Like, would they not have the web range to just shoot it at the Statue of Liberty and then just c let it take them there? Would that not be possible? I mean, I mean I'm... they have, I mean, they have a teleportation ring, so oh. I don't have an oh. issue with them getting there. You so. should have mentioned that before, actually. You should have mentioned that a few minutes ago, but yeah, you're right. I, yeah, my my issue was with the uh, Doc Ock, not really with the Spider Man, or because they they have an open opened portal before like the battle begins, you know, that they fail to close. So it is probably, I think that implies that they got there through teleportation. Yeah, I almost wanted to say, bruh, you forgot Ned had a teleportation ring, lol. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah that that's just a fuck up, on Audrey's part. Like, people complain about that. Like, it doesn't make sense for him to use it or whatever. But she just forget it exists. Yeah, you're right. They did. That's how that. Oh my god. That's how Ned and MJ got there was because of the teleportation. She. Well, yeah, yeah. Th oh they my... were playing like you can see like in the background there is that I think the school lab. They they are still in the school lab and, so. Right after they like finished all the cures, they probably just teleported there. They, you know, uh, they showed the location to J. 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 Jonah Jameson, and they would, and they, and they would uh, put a box there and close the portal. But they were not able to do that because they could not close the portal. So, yeah. So I thought her point was stupid, but it turned out 
that it was like really like really stupid. It was omega stupid instead. Like she she just flat out like objectively forgot something in the film. She's just wrong. <laughs> Like, it's not even an argument thing now. Like, she's just objectively wrong. But. For a location, there were no real consequences. Also, I like how she meant, like, she goes, like, she explains these, like, worthless nothing points. Because, like, it's not impossible for Spider-Man to get to the Statue of Liberty. But doesn't explain that the film is just fan service. <laughs> Fucking disaster of a video. Points on their surroundings that the characters had to be aware of, so the stakes were pretty low. Also, the Statue of Liberty is on a fucking island. How did Spider-Man even get there? It's possible he could have taken a portal, and I just genuinely don't remember it. But Doc. Yes. Oh, he's actually actually gonna make the good point now. Doc also made it there. He definitely didn't go through a portal, and he also can't fucking fly. The dialogue was really cheesy. To be fair, does the movie say he can't fly though? Yeah, that's what I thought. To be- You know what? Actually, he has nanotech now. Who's to say nanotech technology can't let the, 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 the claws spin like helicopter blades, dude? Who's to say? Who's to say? Not the movie, so your point's still right, but still. Most of the time, and when I left the theater, I- Portal, and I just genuinely don't remember it. But Doc Ock also made it there. He definitely didn't go through a portal, and he also can't fucking fly. The dialogue was really cheesy most of the time, and don't care. I mean, yeah, that, that is pro I mean, that is that is a probably a good point that Doc Ock somehow didn't, you know, get get there. So, I mean, he could have like stolen a boat. I mean, he he does arrive there pretty late into the fight. So, yeah, well, the there, movie there needs are, to explain there... it. It, yeah, yeah, that's kind of it is a a, a small plot hole, a small one, because it does save uh, the two Spider Man from Electro, so it is a bit of a plot. It is a small plot hole yeah. do, that do, we don't know. You know, we don't yeah, know how yeah, he yeah. got there. Yeah, Doc Ock's face when he watches Star Wars Rebels and sees the Inquisitor start to fly. Oh yeah, he's thinking about it. Anyway, um, yeah. Made it there. He definitely didn't go through a portal, and he also can't fucking fly. The dialogue was really cheesy most oh, of the time. Oh, yeah. Don't care, didn't ask. The time, and when I left the theater, I had a headache from the number of times I rolled my eyes. There were Wait, th there's not even... Okay, again, don't care, didn't ask. You're not we like... Need, we need examples. You're examples. Not ex yeah, you're right. You're not explaining what's wrong with the jokes at all, so, like, at all, so it's worthless, but, um, again, by the way, your the video is called, uh, not, like, why I, I didn't like No Way Home or something, it's, it is cheap and insulting, like, objectively, so, anyway, um, uh, yeah, oh, oh yeah, um, there's not even, like, that many jokes in the movie compared to, like, other Marvel movies, like, I feel like it's pretty serious, at least, I mean, like, like there are a lot of, like, small jokes, like, banter and shit, but why are you rolling your eyes at banter? Like, what? I, I don't get it. He didn't go through a portal, and he also can't fucking fly. The dialogue was really cheesy most of the time, and when I left the By theater... the way, Spider-Man is supposed to be cheesy. Like, I, I, I like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I feel like all Spider-Man media... And Spider-Man as a character is pretty cheesy to some degree, but mm -hmm. I had a headache yeah. from the number of times I rolled. Especially when it's like this scene where they're Spider-Man's making fun of Doc Ock. Remember when people were actually throwing a tantrum about that in the trailer? It was uh, they're making fun of Doc Ock, you fucking Tom Holland. I think. I think the reaction, you know, was kind of overblown considering y yes. how many weirder, weirder names there, there are, as well as a weirder characters. So, a guy called Doctor Octopus with, uh, you know, mechanical ro robotic arms—it's not really that weird in the MCU universe. Yeah. So I think the reaction. Uh, 
didn't need to be so cartoonish. Oh, you mean in... their re the character's reaction? Yeah, yeah, the, cr the character's reaction. I kind of understand that maybe maybe they should have just given them like a chuckle, like I oh mean... yeah, Doctor Octopus, like you have four. If they should have like you have four, you know, four mechanical limbs and four normal. Or maybe so something, just not like this uh, overblown laughter. Well, no matter how fantastical the MCU universe is, that's still a pretty big coincidence for someone to be named Otto Octavius and be Doc. And well, as Jane Jonas says, what are the odds? Winds up with four limbs, eight or winds up with eight limbs. I, yeah. What are what are the odds? Anyway. I mean, yeah. Anyway, whatever. People were crying about it. People were actually offended by it, like on the Raimi Reddit or whatever. Like it was like Doc Ock's trying to help him, and you're laughing in his fucking face. I I swear to God, that's what. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I know that happened. Oh, it's beautiful. Dialogue was really cheesy most of the time, and when I left the theater, I had a headache from the number of times I rolled my eyes. There were way too many. I don't characters. know. Like again, it's just my interpretation, but I feel like you were wanting to do that almost. Like, is there really isn't? Like, I don't, like, what are you rolling your eyes at? Like, it's just banter. Like, what? What's the problem? Like, no, really, what? I don't. <laughs> at any given time and after the fourth instance of a villain from a different there were way too many characters at any given time and after the fourth instance of a villain from a different universe being filled in on what was happening i got really annoyed again something spider-verse did way better and was actually self-aware all right so now we kind of have to remember the structure of the movie here so the fourth time a villain was filled in on what was happening like do you mean like a quick little scene like oh yeah like, what, what do you mean? Like, show an example. Because, like, I remember... We this... didn't have... Well, we didn't have... In No Way Home, there isn't, like, a scene that... Uh, like, the type of scene that happens in uh, uh, Spider-Wars. Spider -Wars, where we get, like, the backstory of the, you know, Spider-Person. Right, right. And that's kind of like a joke. But on No Way yeah, Home... It's... You only get, like, them uh, talking about... The... From, you know, where they were taken from. Like you, I guess you get that scene, but that every single villain has a different like input. It's not like all of them have the same backstory or something like that. Like the spider people here. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't really matter much. In No Way Home, but you are right. In No Way Home, like there's the scene before Peter stops the box and realizes that the villains are going to die. Where like. Uh, Doc Ock explains to Green Goblin that he died, and then Flint Marco explains to Peter that they both died, and then, like, Max and, like, Lizard talk about each other. Like, it was one scene. <laughs> like, I don't know, what are you talking about? Like, I guess, I don't know, like, there was a scene where they were talking, like, Doc Ock before that, I guess, and maybe, like, Norman in the Feast Center, but, I don't know. What I like, like, again, again, you're not really actually trying to prove your points at all. You're just declaring them to be true. Um, I also like how she's not even, like, there's no structure to this video anymore. It's literally just her listing off random things that enter her head that she didn't like. Like, literally just randomly. Like, before, there was some structure about the fan service thing, but now it's just gone. Like, it's just a ramble now. It's just a rant. Where of? How did you get here? Well, it's kind of a long story. Maybe not that long. As far as things I liked about the movie, there really aren't that many. I didn't have a problem with any of the actors, and I thought they all did great for what wait, they Wait, wait, there's not what? I was honestly, I kind of zoned out, to be honest. Maybe not that long. As far as things I liked about the movie, there really aren't that many. I didn't have a problem with any of the actors, and I thought they all did great for what they were working with. Tom Holland really saved this movie. You know, oh, you know what? That's interesting to say, but, um, uh, I like how every time, like, in every critique of any movie, they always, people always say that they tried to do, salvage what they had to deal with, like, 
it's, it's like it's not even like a bad thing to say. It's just funny to hear that I've heard it so much. But Tom Holland saved this movie. That's actually not. It's a better take than most people have that we've responded to. So all right. In more ways than one, apparently. Zendaya was fine, oh. except for the fact that her character has no personality aside from cynical asshole, which is. All right. Okay. Well. Oh my god. You know what? Again, it's still better than what I remember the other reviews being, but. Uh. Her character is just a cynical asshole. Even though. Even though she like is hopeful later that they they'll be able to cure the villains with Peter, even though she has no reason uh, to be hopeful after Aunt May died. I, I, I think she was hopeful also in Far From Home. I don't I don't think she was on one note there. Yeah, uh, and also at, in the end, the end when she finds out about you know Peter's identity and all that. Yeah, and also she says that like she's Squidward or something, but she doesn't like mention that the reason. Uh, she's usually pessimistic is that she's so she's surprised like so she's not disappointed when bad things happen I mean and how like Peter and her bond over that but are still like opposites in that regard uh, generally but no 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 okay. isn't inherently bad I'm a cynical asshole but it was literally her only character quality besides I mean I guess you are generic love interest who i didn't have any stake in at all generic? the best part of this movie wait do you want to explain i mean this is what about ism but do you want to explain how like the sam raimi mj was like so much more was so much better and not bland compared to this mj then again i don't know if she's a raimi cuck so i'm not even sure if that's fair to say really uh like she's not like anomaly where you fucking thought that you could be in the same continuity as the Raimi films, boy? How did you have some balls? <laughs> For me, was any scene involving Alfred Molina. And it has nothing to do with the fact that his character provided nostalgia from the Sam Raimi trilogy that I grew up with and has arguably been deemed one of the most influential superhero movies of all time. It is literally just because I have a hard on for him. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, insert joke about all the... F this is the most influential movie, but this movie, No Way Home, still has less flaws... Or still has less flaws than the bank scene does. Okay, fine. It's less so Alfred Molina himself and more so his voice... I'm sexually attracted to Vigo Grimborn, okay? Fucking sue me. I am not kidding. There all was right. a point in the movie where he said the words, Dear boy. Well, it's good to see you, dear boy. <laughs> my dear hiccup my dear hiccup my dear hiccup poor dear hiccup <laughs> and i all right the jokes pass now you have to stop almost had an orgasm in the theater while i hated the fact that the whole crux of the story relied on toby Maguire and andrew garfield's spider-man except it didn't though i mean the first like they come at the like end they of the arrive, movie uh, yeah like before the third third act so yeah like they're not even in like they're at, like they're at best at the end of the second act at best but uh yeah like no no like theoretically this movie could have uh like they could the story they could they wouldn't have to change the story too much if they didn't include andrew and toby like if tom holland was just on his own they wouldn't have what? actually had the what 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 is fucking Okay, they wouldn't have had to change the story much, really. It's just, like, instead of Toby stopping Peter from killing Norman, like, he just realizes himself that it's wrong or whatever. Maybe, if, I don't know, include Uncle Ben scene or whatever you fucks want. But, um, yeah. Like, isn't that, then some people complain about that? That they weren't in, like, the first half of the movie? Eh, I don't know. I think, I really like the fact that we get to focus on the villains personally yeah anyway I, sorry go ahead i really love the. i when i first was watching it i was really surprised that they like the when they were just hanging out together in the you know the house together together yeah, yeah. because i really like this like idea of all these different characters that especially when it's like the, all these old characters like uh, being in a 
in one place talking to each other. Yeah. Especially, especially like uh, usually these kind of scenarios uh, are made in like fan comics or you know, you yeah. know, you see like all these uh, characters like being on a couch yeah, together. Yeah, I, I know. I know it would never be so. It was kind of weirdly satisfying seeing them together, like yeah, being there. I like the chemistry between them. Like it, it's a it's a like really small thing, but I like when Doc Ock said, "Norman, you're dead," and Max is like, "God, I love it here." I don't know. I I just thought it was charming, but anyway, Toby and Andrew are like basically yeah. They're they're not even basically they're side characters in this movie. They're just there to be like a, br a brothering figures to Tom Holland to help him th to stay on the good path, to stay on Aunt May's way, to stay on on his way. And like it, you could change, you could rewrite the movie. It wouldn't even be that hard where they weren't in the movie at all, and the movie would still be the same. Tom Holland could still spare Norman. Tom Holland could still make the ultimate sacrifice and, like, save the multiverse, but ruin his own life. Like, they're side characters. You're wrong. You're just saying that... As well as, the, as, well as you know, there are side characters as well as the antagonists. You know, uh... at the end. The villains, I mean. Yeah. See, they are technically side characters in the, like the second act when they're hanging out together, and then they are like the villains at the well, end. The villains are more like they're more important than Tom and Andrew, uh, not uh, Toby and Andrew are, but like still, I mean, yeah, it is like Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. Like that's protagonist and antagonist. Uh, yeah. Uh, main characters being in it admittedly they were orgasm in the theater while i hated the fact that the whole crux of the story relied on toby Maguire, what do you mean the what do you no actually what do you mean by the crux of the story the crux of the story whatever that would mean i like i would think that would mean like i would say the crux of the story would be uh peter not if peter peter not trying to save the villains from death even though it won't benefit him at all. Like, even, even, like that's what I would think. Like, it... But I guess the... Cr I, the I guess by the crux, she means the marketing of the movie? Except, no, it technically wasn't, because they Obi and Toby and Andrew weren't in the marketing. It, it's just I mean, gibberish. If she... No, 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 no. No, it's just gibberish. It's just gibberish. She, the she... only way I can see, it, see this is if she's looking at it like... This whole idea, this whole plot was made this way because they wanted all the spider man at the, you know, at but the that's, same But that's like all movies, though. Like, time. the writers want a end result, and then they come up with how they get to it. The good writers, yeah, but, the good writers but it's do the it logically, the bad writers but do it illogically. Yeah, I know, but this is like the only way we can interpret interpret her argument that, uh, you know, the whole plot... Uh, is a crux to get them into the story. That's the only way I can see that happening because, like, they don't appear appear for the for most of the movie. So, you know. So, she's criticizing the movie for doing something all stories do because she's not explaining how it's done poorly, like how it's a poor crux, like how it doesn't make sense that they're there or whatever. She hasn't even gone into the spell. Weirdly, Jesus. And Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man characters being in it. Admittedly, they were extremely charming, and I enjoyed the scenes that they were in. It was amusing to see all three of them bantering on about the differences between their universes, and that takes up quite a bit of the third act. But all I kept thinking was, um, does it though? I I guess there's like when they're making the cures, and then before the final battle when they're at the Statue of Liberty. That's like two scenes. I mean, I guess three if you count after Aunt May's death, where they're talking on, um, wherever it was, but... that That's three scenes, although that one wasn't really bantering, because that was a serious scene, but... I'll be nice to you and say that's three scenes. Hmm. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> Holy shit! If I were someone who'd only followed the MCU and had never seen the previous- I don't fucking care! 
PS2 Spider-Man franchises, I would not be able to follow anything they were saying. I thought it was funny. Um, well, actually, I guess I do care, because, eh, not really. This Spider-Man fought an alien. This Spider-Man fought a robotic rhino. Like, th again, go back to the hypothetical, where they weren't Spider-Man from other movies. It was like an animated film or whatever, and they were just older Spider-Man from different universes. That would still make sense. Like, even, you know what? Even, let's go a different hypothetical. Let's say, like, the comics didn't even exist in this universe, and we have no idea who Venom or Rhino is. It could still make sense that, oh, well, our Spider-Man fights supervillains, so they probably would fight different supervillains. You're wrong. You're fucking wrong. Um, although, maybe, like, the payoffs with the, vil the other villains, maybe... Well, no, Andrew has the setup where he says Max was the nicest guy in the world. And, like, I don't know, he makes up with Max. Like, that does at the end. And, like, that doesn't make as much sense about Tasm 2, but it still makes enough sense. Uh, <laughs> like, what? Sandman is from... Sp Sandman in this movie was set up to be a ally or at least, like, acquaintance of some, some, of some kind of Toby. So Toby's saying we're going home to him, and also he has a daughter, and Peter would most likely know about that if it, if the movie doesn't just say he already knows about that. Like, it makes sense that Toby would be nice to Sandman in this movie. Like, what, what does it make sense? You know what? Would it, it would be so fucking easy. Just point out, like, one line of dialogue that doesn't make sense, even. Like, in this movie. Just one, even. You can't even uh, do that, though. You can't even I, do that. I mean, that. probably... You could use probably the one with uh, Flash Thompson. About how he, you know, made a book about how oh. he's uh, Peter's thought, friend. And... I thought we were talking about, like, the, the Toby movies or whatever. Or the oh, Andrew movies. Oh, uh, but... oh, sorry, sorry. I just... Uh, I probably misheard it. I thought that we were talking about, you know, No Way Home. Sorry, sorry. Well, no, no, no. Like, I... Well, she said, if I did... If I only watched the MC... Wait, let me... Let me see. This is between their universes, and that takes up quite a bit of the third act. But all I kept thinking was, holy shit. If I were someone who'd only followed the MCU and had yep. never seen the previous two Spider-Man franchises... Yep, would... yep. She is as stupid as I thought she was. So again, point out like point out where what lines you can't understand without watching the previous two Spider-Man universes. Like point out like try to point out one, but you won't cuz you don't give a shit, Audrey. You're just rambling. You don't give a shit. That, that actually I just realized. I thought this was like a video essay of some kind. I'm dumb. This is literally just her playing the fucking trailer and rambling over it. This is nothing. Why did why did I think this was different than those other videos? I. Anyway. Anyway, I, I point, I explain, I pointed examples of how a lot of the lines of dialogues do make sense in the context of this movie because they set it up in this movie. But you know, even if, even if there were lines that didn't make sense and you did, well, like there aren't any payoffs that I don't think in this movie that don't make any sense at all if you don't watch the other movies. Except, like, maybe... Well, no, no, never mind. Never mind. Um, but, like, even if there was some dialogue you're saying that doesn't make sense if you didn't watch those Spider-Man movies. Like, okay. I mean, it's technically a sequel to those movies. Like, if you watch Empire Strikes Back and say, wait, what's the Death Star they're talking about? That's not, like, a problem with the movie. Like, if, th like, if, th if this was, like... If this was the one of the problems, if this like if this is one of the problems of the movie that were so important that in your eleven minute re review you had to mention it, the movie's doing pretty good. That like oh it expects you to know things from the previous movies. Man, we're doing good, aren't we? I mean some, I mean some of, I mean some of the, some of the scenes would not hit hit so hard if you didn't know what happened in the previous ones like. Yeah, when yeah, Toby but they still and make sense. Doc... So. Yeah, yeah, they make sense, but if you didn't know what happened in them, like, it would, it will not hit so hard like it does. Like Doc Ock and Toby 
Why is that a think... problem? Oh, it's not. It's not a problem. It's just that it. Mm. Well, yeah, but you're then right. again, uh, that that's kind of like. Uh, then again, it, it, you could like to talk about any MCU movie about, especially like the crossover ones, where you need to know a lot of uh, information about previous movies to understand what's going on. Yeah, actually, MCU. This would be common shit for MCU fans at this point, if they only watch the MCU. Like this wouldn't even be anything new. <laughs> Even some of the, like, really good ones, like uh, the first Avengers movie or Civil War, yeah, need, they both need, like, a lot of information. You need a lot of information to know, like, what's happening for you to, you know... Yeah, well, like, I'm pretty sure those movies... Sorry. pretty sure those movies do, like, No Way Home do, and they have, like, a lot of clever dialogue that, like, uh, reference the other movies, so we still know what their characters are in this movie. Like, we... Like, we don't need to watch the other movies, is what I'm saying. I mean, Civil War, they show, you know, the events of the previous movies. Like, they show the the conflict in the first Avengers, the second Avengers, as well as... Uh, was it uh, Iron Man 3 or um, Winter, Sol- Winter, I, Soldier? Winter Soldier? I think, Winter Soldier. yeah. And then they show the accident at the start of Civil War, where Wanda, you know explodes that part of the building so yeah. as well as in Avengers they mention things from the all the like previous movies like you don't really n- need to know that much uh, to enjoy Avengers like I think I saw Avengers at the only characters I knew up, knew who they were like I've seen their movies w- were Iron Man 1 and 2 Oh, and I and I haven't seen Captain Ma- America or the Incredible Hulk or t- or Thor. Actually, like, I think I was the same way. I don't think I watched Captain America or Thor when I saw Avengers. I think I did watch Incredible Hulk, but I don't. Rem- I don't. I don't remember that movie at all. Um, so I so I only knew about Iron Man and Black Widow and no one and Nick Fury, but no one else. Me too. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Actually. And I still. And I still enjoyed it. I mean, you. I still understood like who these characters were, and I, I understood what kind of. I could imagine what kind of history they had together, like Thor and Loki. Even though I didn't see the first Thor at that time. Exactly, but even if there were some lines of dialogue that don't make sense, which is like what she said, why is that? Like, why is the film bad now? <sighs> anything they were saying i thought it was funny that andrew gar he followed the mcu and had wait never wait seen uh, the st- two uh pause it i think a good example would be if it would be like like the new batman movie or if they created a new universe and then you would need to like uh, know what happened in the comics for you to understand like a history yes. of a character exactly but- that they like reference something at that, and then the movie doesn't do anything, or something like with the sequel trilogy, where they just say certain things, but they don't really make sense and need more elaboration, but they don't get any of it. A better example, which I think you just referenced, um, actually you might have just said it, uh, sorry, is the sequel trilogy, because, yeah, yeah, because you have to use, like, they had, like, explanations for shit, like how Ray was so powerful. Like, in the book, it says she absorbed Kylo's force power. She downloaded it. She, uh, yeah. she didn't copy it. She downloaded it. As, do you know, like, the Force Awakens was supposed to open with a shot of Luke's hand from Empire Strikes Back holding the lightsaber, like, going through space and then being picked up by someone? Yeah, but how did it get into space? That's... And how and how the did the hand stay attached? You know, attached as well as you know, whole through this time, because in the EU, I remember that the lightsaber was like uh, passed down through a lot of characters until it got until it got back to the Skywalker's lineage. I think it was found by was it Ben Skywalker? I think it was Ben, one of uh, Luke's ch- children. So. Yeah. Yeah, but especially with the Last Jedi, where they like say, you know, what happened to Kylo? There, 
there really needs to be more explanation of there's, what happened there's there. There's no explanation. Like, they need to have, like, a Kylo show or something for the sequel trilogy to make as, sense. As well as uh, the entire... The, as well as the entire thing with Palpatine and all that. Where the... Where the expanded the material, material contradicted itself. One said that it was the original Palpatine, the other said that it was a clone. Yeah, we actually like don't a, know. Like, the film says cloning and... Like, like it implies both, that he was like a zombie, resurrected, and he's a clone. It implies both. It tries to have its cake and eat it too, but... Yeah, yeah. I know that I, I went off top, a bit off topic, but yeah... It's fine. I don't even remember the topic. My memory was is a, fucked today. Jesus. The topic was that, uh, you know, about all, all this uh, other material that, that is being referenced. Uh, ah, the... yes, 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 yes. So that's why I put a lot of examples. Example, that, you were, poor examples, yes. You were going to put exa good examples of that done horrendously. But this, even if it is true, which... It isn't true. She hasn't proved it's even true. But even if it was, this is perfectly fine. Spider-Man franchises. Well, I would well, not the problem, be able to follow I mean. anything they were saying. I thought follow anything. Yeah, that's just like I, I almost want to say you're just lying to me now. Like no, no, you would. Have you act? Did you actually like think this through before you said it? Did you like think about the scenes? Like, cause we that's what we just did. We I went through the scenes to think like oh. Wait, would this make sense? And then I realized, yes, it did, because they set up this and this. Um, yeah. I will say that Doc Ock scene you mentioned, I forgot to mention. And I don't know if it's referenced, I mean, well, I don't know if it's referenced that, like, Doc Ock and Toby had some sort of relationship. But I guess th they didn't really, though, in Spider-Man 2 is the funny thing, but, uh... I don't think that's referenced, but uh, the movie does point out that they did know each other, and Doc Ock was a good man before this, so it's not impossible, but, um, and also the inhibitor chip, so, like, yeah, like, you could still understand what was going on, even if it wasn't fully explained if you didn't watch the other movies, so, get fucked. <laughs> I thought it was funny that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was constantly taken the least seriously of the three. What are you fucking talking about? What? I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you not remember the scene? No. Look here. Listen. Did you not remember the scene where he saved MJ from dying and was trying to not burst into tears? No, no. I, I, I think she, she means the scene where they, they're talking about the, who they fought, and he like says that. That he, showing. Know... Sorry for interrupting you, but that showing his insecurity. In his depression after Gwen, after letting Gwen die in his hands, and Toby does like the Big Brother thing and tries to lift him up. And yeah, yeah, but but it, I you're think the wrong. Movie, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, but 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 there are references where the movie does acknowledge that those <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man movies are pretty bad. Like not not only with Andrew, but also with Electro and Lizard, where, where they mock each other. Like, you know, Electro oh, yeah, mocks yeah, Lizard yeah. because Who Lizard's plan is just to make head? everyone... Stop with the bullshit. Oh, uh, Mahler? The Mahler thing? I haven't got... Never... Sorry, go ahead. No, no that's an April Fool's joke with the uh, EFF1. Oh. Oh. They, put a fa they put a fake pin there, so... Oh. Well, basically, I think the movie acknowledges that the Amazing Spider-Man movies are, like, the worst out of all of them. I mean, and, I mean again. That, sorry, 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 sorry. I mean, you have that lizard and electro conversation, and then you have like Andrew like talking how he's not really that impressive compared to to them. I think that that is a pretty direct direct I guess, statement. That, I guess, like, I, that's not really how I saw it. To be honest, I well, no. I mean, yeah, there there is a character meaning behind it that he's insecure, but yeah. But, uh, on a met on a meta level, it is there, you know, kind of acknowledging that I, his universe didn't re didn't really succeed that well, and but then uh, like uh, both Toby and mainly Toby uh, encourages him that he is amazing. I guess you can interpret it that way, but the point she's making is still wrong. Like it's not it's not like he's a fucking clown in this movie or something.
No, no, but I think that there are these small, small, smaller references that kind of, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think. I think this this I don't think this is a bad point but because she's not saying that he he acts like a clown it's just that well like the, they the were actually kind of, sorry. Uh, sorry well let, let's continue uh, I didn't mean to unpause it I actually pre- I, I was playing with a bouncy ball and it hit the space key okay is, and that takes up quite a bit of the third act but all I kept thinking was holy shit if I were someone who'd only followed the MCU and had never seen the previous two Spider-Man franchises, I would not be able to follow anything they were saying. I thought it was funny that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man yes, was constantly would. taken the least seriously of the three. Constantly. She said constant. That's the funny thing, is I keep, like, hearing something stupid from her, re-listening to say if it could be, like, you know, defended with context, and it's somehow just as stupid, if, if not dumber, than what I thought she said. Like, they were actually self-aware that his franchise probably should have never happened. And I did enjoy the uh, very- There was nothing about, like, why do you need to exist? Like, oh, man, Andrew, man, you look like someone that was just made to keep the rights of Spider-Man for Shoney. <laughs> there was no joke like that. You know what would have been funny, though, if, like, Electro, I don't know, if they made some joke about, like, hey, guys, check out my Sony-branded glasses or something like that. Because Tasm 2 had a bunch of Sony branded shit everywhere, but. Very ending of the movie, where Peter chooses not to go back to MJ and Ned and lets them live their lives without the burden. I actually forgot about that part, dude. Man, Peter's such a fucking Chad. Man. ...of knowing he's Spider-Man. Again, probably Tom Holland's doing, but it did work very well. I would... Prob... Just speculation. Probably Tom Holland's doing. I mean, maybe. Again... Don't care. Didn't really ask. I was a little confused at the stinger where it's teased that Venom will make a future appearance in the Avengers universe, given that this uh, is Tom Holland's final portrayal of Spider-Man. Wait. Who the I don't... Th who said this is his final portrayal of Spider-Man? What? He's still Spider-Man. What are you talking about? I mean, yeah, but you can... But you could, like, uh, end the trilogy as well as, you know... Yeah, yeah, I didn't... Not, not, right, not do didn't, any... Sorry, I didn't oh. ask if if the trilogy was over. I asked, is there so? Hold on. Sorry if I'm being rude to you. I, I'm not wanting to be. Tom, fuck. Tom. Wait, wait. How do I even phrase this? Will there be more Tom Holland? God damn it. Holland Spider Man. I'm not good at googling shit to be honest with you or i guess it's yahoo for some reason marvel confirms more spider-man movies presumably with tom holland huh presumably spider-man will return for another trilogy of mcu spider i mean yeah that's what i i never heard otherwise why did she think this is the end i don't if it was the end that i definitely would be like all over the news or whatever anyway what were you saying I mean, it's not uh, completely confirmed. I, I I agree with the statement that uh, well, with the Venom statement, we he there was no there was no purpose behind like his cameo in in this movie because he got teleported in at the end of Venom two, and then uh, he did nothing, and then he got teleported back to his universe. Well, that's very in character for Eddie Brock and Venom. Though, yeah, yeah. I, just... I, I, no, I I'm saying that I, I'm. I don't think I'm just saying that in a grand scheme of things it it really felt pointless. I mean like a, it well the point well, is this, that a part of the symbiote was left in the universe. But like will this affect any of the like future Venom movies because I don't really see what will like change. Although it, I don't see any purpose behind it basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, I behind mean, that cameo uh, the point was that the symbiote was left in the universe, but I will say, um, the Venom post credit scene implies that, like, Venom takes an interest in Tom Holland and is, like, gonna hunt him down, presumably, or something. I was, but... most people, like, uh, speculated that they will meet, like, Spider-Man and Venom, and Venom maybe, like, maybe works with him or likes him, and then we, when he comes 
in the next Venom movie, he will have like you know the Venom symbol, the yeah, the, the spider symbol on his body that he will make. Yeah, because it, he still doesn't have any kind of symbol on him. So yeah, but they don't really meet. They he just sees him on, on television. So we, we're not. I don't really know what's happening with Venom. Is he in the MCU? Well, I didn't uh, know. No, he, I, he, I didn't know he I, was teleported out, but I guess he logically would be. Yeah, yeah. He, I think it's it is shown that he's teleported out while he's drinking. So I just realized a probable plot hole, actually. So they're tele the villains are teleported when they find out Spider Man's identity, and P- Venom knows Spider Man's identity because apparently there's a symbiotic re- like hive mind relationship between symbiotes in the multiverse right yeah venom 2 sets that up but the thing is though would it like venom like wouldn't venom have been taken from whatever the time he would have learned that uh the toby Maguire peter was spider-man like it like basically it would have been in like 2007 or whatever right like it probably would have been before that venom met eddie brock uh because I'm assuming. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I, while we're talking about this, I think I, well, no, no. Let's finish this one. So yeah, one um is pretty confusing on how how he works, especially how he got teleported in because, uh, in I think it at the end of one um two he just sees uh, the, far from home uh, news, on TV. So I don't know if he got teleported before then or somehow he... I don't understand what, what was happening there. He would have had to so. have been. So the way, the no way No Way Home explains it, the way it would have to work is that Venom... Wait a minute. Oh! It actually does make sense! When Venom was teleported, that was right when he was telling Eddie about the different, like, he could, the different, the symbiote hive mind. So that must mean that uh, Eddie immediately was just thinking, like, was just thinking about the knowledge of Tommy McGuire Peter being Spider Man that the other, the the to- uh, Topher Grace Venom God. He must have learned that right then because he was thinking about the symbiote hive mind information, and then he was teleported because of that. Never mind. It actually makes enough sense. It's still like uh-huh. it's, it's still weird, but it makes enough sense. All right. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was that? I mean, that would be uh, a. What I, uh, sorry. Good. What I wanted to say was that uh, that one plot hole that we talked talked about, where, uh, why, why, are there only villains and Spider Man that you know, are from all the older movies, right? I think uh, the idea behind it is that is that the spell that Peter wants uh, wants to be. Uh, you know, the information that he wants to be erased is that Peter, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And then when it fails and it gets tampered to that all the people that know Peter is Spider-Man are coming in, then, you know, in Anomaly's video later on, he says, why why don't we see, like, Gwen, uh, Gwen Stacy as, you know, spider you know, yeah. Spider Gwen, or any other allies, or or any of the, the other weird Spider Spider well, Wars uh, characters, is because like uh, they're not Peter Parker. the The spell is specifically anyone who knows that Peter Parker is Spider Man. Oh right. That means if uh, someone from like Gwen's universe, where Gwen, Gwen Spider Woman, yeah, he, he, she is the Spider Woman. I mean, not technically Spider Spider Woman is a different character, so Spider Gwen. Oh, well, that she would be called Spider Woman in the universe, though, right? I I don't maybe maybe, so it would be definitely impossible for her to get her get there. I don't Un- know if unless if the, sorry unless it was the Spider Verse movie Spider Gwen, because then she would know that a Peter Parker is Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, technically, but. Mm. The thing is, though, is that they were bought. The other villains were boxed, and it could have, as far as we know, have been any that were randomly selected. And it is contrived that it's the characters from the older movies, but 
it would technically it is, be but contrived it... no matter who was picked because it was at random. Like if you're picked for the lottery, that is contrived for you. But yeah, it is. But uh, like uh, I think we do get a reason why we don't see like some of the w weirder characters from like the other comics as well as other universes where it's uh, much more different. Yeah. Because it's still like Peter Parker is Spider Man, so there is only a select, like a, probably most of them have Peter Parker as Spider Man, but you know there are still like limits to who would be brought to the multiverse game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, we we can continue. I just wanted to mention this. Yeah, because I, I thought about it. Yeah, I feel like. No Way Home probably should have said something like the Toby and Andrew universes were like the closest universes in the multiverse, but I don't even know yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. The hell knows what they're planning. Anyways, that's all I really have to what say. Where it's planning? teased that Venom will make a future appearance in the Avengers universe, given that this is Tom Holland's final portrayal of Spider-Man. Oh yeah, she thinks Tom Holland isn't Spider-Man anymore for some unexplained reason. Who the hell knows what they're planning? Anyways, that's all I really have- Uh, Tom Holland being Spider-Man still. ...to say about this film. Again, if you enjoyed it, I understand. I don't think you're I really don't understand what- why you don't like it- why- Actually, I actually do why you don't like it, but it's because, I mean, you just see that, like, you, you just see capitalism. Like, you realize that it is a corporate product, like, in some way. Like, it is made to make money. And you realize, oh, that means the movie has no integrity then. And, uh, you were wrong. Stupid or brainless for doing so, but... Well, the feeling's not exactly mutual, but... But I do urge you to pay attention to the production of films before you go... Pay attention. She's urging us to pay attention, Rage. What? Are, are you pay are you paying attention yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm here. No, I was. Jo she's telling us to pay attention. That never oh. mind. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was a little confused at the stinger where it's teased that Vin final portrayal of Spider-Man. Who the hell knows what they're planning? Anyways, that's all I really have to say about this film. Again, if you enjoyed it, I understand. I don't think you're stupid or brainless for doing so, but I do urge you to pay attention to the production of films before you go out and spend a bunch of money support. I, you know, in terms of like morals, I, I sh sure, because I'm pretty sure like the Ant Man movie, like they wouldn't let the director make the film he wanted, so they had to like kick him out yeah. or something. No, he, I think he had to Edgar Wright uh, quit dur during production because he d wasn't allowed a lot of freedom. Yeah, and I believe because he has he has a lot of he has a, a really peculiar he has a style basically to his movies. Yeah, 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 and they wanted a more I don't know samey film to the other MCU films, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, and um, I understand completely like why you want it why you wouldn't want to support a movie that does that. We want to support those practices or worse practices but uh in terms of the actual quality of the movies the pre again i don't care about the pre-production i care about the final result I, I mean like i care in that it's interesting but not that like the movie's bad like if when i'm talking about the film's quality i don't care I, Also, you didn't pay attention to the movie, so maybe you should do more of that. You also didn't pay attention to the post-production and realize that Tom Holland's still Spider-Man, but... I think you're stupid or brainless for doing so, but I do urge you to pay attention to the production of films before you go out and spend a bunch of money supporting them. If I hadn't wanted to make a video on it, I probably Wait. would not have spent... Wait. Like, this movie isn't like Ant-Man, though. Like... There's no, there's no, like, John Watts didn't get to make the movie he wanted. <laughs> what do you talk, like, what, what, what do you mean by the pre-production? Like, what's the problem? That, like, this, they wanted this movie to make money? I know. We know. That's all 
triple bl that's all like that's all movies pretty much or at least every blockbuster one at <laughs> what they oh like they didn't they they rewrote the third act every day like okay i mean that is a i guess i, I guess that's concerning but like i care about the final result why would i not want to pay like that's not necess that doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't buy the movie then i don't get it i, I really don't get it the money to see this movie. I know I sounded super angry, but it was really just because I hate cash hungry executives from billion dollar studios. Well, how about like you make videos about capitalism then and leave this film analysis shit alone because you're not good at it. And trust me, I'm saving my genuine anger for something else that's coming out very soon. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. What basically, happened? What? Basically, what? Uh, th that's the, you know, the critique of that uh, dragon show. You know? Well, I, I know that, but what happened to his hair? Why did he get zapped? Uh, electric dragon, so. Electric dragon. Was that a thing in the original movies? Maybe. I, I think so. I think I only watched the first mm -hmm. one, or I only remember the first one, but... Uh, yeah, I think this is like the end. Merry so. fucking Christmas. Thank fucking God that is over. That was god awful. Anyway, at least finish the video before you burn me at the stake. All right, we have to finish the video. We have to finish the video. Guitar music. All right, your video is shit. There we go. We did it. So, I don't know. How, how, Yay. How are you doing, Rage? Uh, we usually read comments after the video, and they're even worse usually, but... I don't even know. They're, they're, you're just gonna be like the same shit as the video, though. I probably. I... Oh yeah, this person pointing out that the tr this trilogy was basically Tom's origin story, which I think is true. So yeah, <laughs> thank you for giving your opinion. Uh, th okay. You are preaching clap clap this is the moment in my life i became sexist what oh his voice i'm sexually attracted to oh okay huh yeah none of these are really um these are interesting all right i guess that's it then i don't know <laughs> So, uh, yeah, how, 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 how are you feeling, Rage? R Rage? Yes, yes, uh, how, I, I'm here. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm just tired a, a bit, so. Oh. Yeah. I would be too after that video. So, like, do you, um, want to say, I don't know, say something to close out, I guess? Uh... It, it, I think it was a nice conversation that we had, and if uh, the creator of this video would like to like talk to us about this, uh, we would be happy to have you here and discuss it, discuss you on the way home. So. I uh, agree that it was a great conversation, and um, I sincerely doubt the creator, this creator, is going to want to talk to us. But if you do, um, I won't be anywhere as mean as I was here. I'll be nice. I promise. I'll be polite. Uh, yeah, it was basically like the good cop, bad cop routine between Rage, Rage and I on this video. But, um, yeah, alright. I guess that's it then. <laughs> Thank you for watching. No Way Home. 
Okay, it's still recording. No Way Home is still good. You are all wrong. All these videos are wrong, I mean. Like, not... Never mind. Goodbye. <laughs>